Villain Hides His True Colors. Chapter 46. I had no choice but to let out a small exclamation as soon as I read the effect of the newly acquired. This. Reputation. 40, 100 slash 100, 000. Asterisk 1 ST stage effect, improve the abilities of those in the company of the warrior. The greater the trust in the warrior, the greater the effect. Asterisk 2 ND stage effect, unopened. Although the second stage effect wasn't open, the first stage effect alone was unusual. An area of effect buff. I've had similar commander skills in the past, so I was well aware of the power of this AoE buff. At its extreme, they were fraudulent skills that could be used to gather ordinary children and deal with heroes. However, as AoE buffs had such strong effects, it would usually come with at least one fatal weakness. Whether it being the criteria to cast the skill was harsh, or the mana consumption increasing exponentially depending on the number of people, or many other constraints that followed. Therefore, every time an AoE buff was used in the past, the burden on my body would increase to the extent that it interfered with the fights. So in the end, I had to give up my ambition to play as a solo army commander and synthesize all of my commander and buff skills. But this, no matter how long I looked at it, there were no words related to restrictions or limitations. Although the trust in the warrior could be said to be a limitation, even that wasn't a penalty but a condition for an additional buff. And, don't tell me, was there no limit on the number of people either? Assuming yes, this was a really ridiculous skill. If there was no limitation between a hundred or a thousand people, then it may be possible to gather troops and conquer earth. This was truly a jackpot. In particular, for me, who needed to increase the power of mankind to target the content called the Demon Army someday, it could be said to be an ability I welcome with open arms. Looking back, my decision to take seemed to have been the best judgment. I can't believe the skill has reached this level. In any case, what's this number? I doubted my eyes for a moment. Reputation, 40, 100 slash 100, 000. I needed to raise my reputation to 100,000. Honestly, I couldn't tell whether it was too much or not, but considering that the current number was less than half of the total, it seemed far away. Also, it was reputation work. In general, reputation work in RPGs was a series of tedious labor. It was demanding and annoying to raise, and can fall in one instant. The reputation of saving 100 villagers could be wiped away by killing one animal in the village without mercy. I guess this skill will be difficult in that regard. Well, if it had such a good effect and growth was easy, the game balance would collapse. While I was organizing my thoughts, someone suddenly pushed my back and spoke. Ah, kid. Why are you staring into the distance like that? Hmm? Looking back, there was a woman with colorful hair. She was the bomb girl who had created the colorful mushroom clouds during the third test. She picked up one of the items piled up in front of me and spoke. You don't have to refuse. Everyone gave it to you because they wanted to. Hee <laughs> hee, you all feel the same, right? Yes, please have a look at the kendo I gave you. Even if it looks like that, it's a sword made by a famous craftsman. Yes, please drink the potion I gave you. The bomb girl, who at best only gave me a leather jacket, was puffing out her chest if she had prepared everything. I picked up an antique longsword nearby. However, no message came to mind in the status window. Trash. This antique wasn't even an item. I threw the longsword to one side and quickly classified the other items as I checked the options. Still, I was hoping there would be something useful among them. But, all the things they gave me were trash. Sometimes there were items with options, but most of them were useless miscellaneous items. This is cute. Try it on. I'm sure it'll suit you, hee <laughs> hee. The bomb girl held out a cute cape with a pink frills and shook it. This item was already checked a while ago. A degrade miscellaneous item with only the effect of gaining favor with men. I stared at the items inside for a long time. Ha. Huh? H ha? Huh? W what's wrong? You don't like it? I it's cute. The bomb girl looked at me with a puzzled look. Other candidates standing around me gave a similar look. As such, I told them. Everyone, thank you so much for thinking of me, but you don't have to do this. B but it's our sincerity. No. I didn't help you guys because I wanted something like this. There wasn't even a single good item. People exclaimed with admiration on their faces. At the same time, a message popped up in front of my eyes. Plus 10 reputation. Oh? My reputation unexpectedly rose. It was a very insignificant number, but it was still something. So it was roughly like this. An idea crossed my mind on what I should do from now on to raise my reputation. It was the moment to show off my acting skills that I had honed so far. Recalling the expression of a hero I had seen in a TV commercial in the past, I gave a pleasant smile. I'll accept everyone's sincerity, so please take these items back. They're all precious things to you. People all around me covered their mouths as tears welled up. And soon after, they nodded with a solemn look. Okay. However, I'll make sure to pay you back this favor someday. Plus 10 reputation. 
Good. So, people expressed their gratitude and began to take back the useless trash piled up in front of me one by one. Really, thank you. If you come to Sanoja someday, please pay my family a visit. Plus one reputation. I'm sorry. Actually, I've been jealous of you all this time, thanks to you, I was able to come to my senses. Plus one reputation. It was just returning the trash they gave me, but my reputation was rising. And that was how my reputation rose by 50. Reputation, 40, 150 slash 100, 000. Although I couldn't farm items properly, it could be said that it was quite a profitable business because my reputation had risen like this. Huh? Where's the ring I gave the boy? My family heirloom isn't here either. Everyone, if there's someone who took it by mistake, please return it to the owner. Well, still, not all of them were miscellaneous items. Thanks to this, I was able to pack a few items from the pile of garbage. Please have a clear conscience. If you're going to be a hero, you can't be like this. Plus one reputation. Surprisingly, raising my reputation might be easy. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. After the brief commotion, I looked at the candidates gathered here. The number was 89. Considering that there were currently 100 survivors, it was no exaggeration to say that most of the survivors were here. Damn. I felt another heartache when I thought of the dead again. But rather than get hung up on the past, it was now time to plan for the future. The next step was to lead these guys and escape here safely. Fortunately, I had an AoE buff, so if I can use them well. Looking back at the candidates, I spoke. Everyone. I'm going to escape this place through the base camp. Then, as expected, voices of concern were heard from all around. B but isn't the supervisor guarding it? T that's right. Going there now is suicide. If we just calmly wait until support comes. Boom. I pulled out red velvet curse and hit the ground. People flinched and trembled at the sudden shock. Do you think you can survive if you just wait here? T that's. I'll tell you for sure. If we continue to stay here, everyone will die. Actually, you all know it well. What I said wasn't just a threat to move them. Of course, that was my intention, but in fact, it was clear that other robots would come one after another to attack us if we continued to stay here. And in this extreme environment, unlike robots, humans will quickly run out of stamina. I have no intention of letting a single one of you die. So you need to trust me more from now on. B but. Even with my words, there was no movement. Everyone was just looking at the surroundings with a frightened look. Hmm, it seemed they were completely traumatized by what had happened. I guess the effect of is useless now. But right then, Mousen, who was watching the situation from the side, spoke. Hmm, you chicken shits. I can't believe I was competing with such scaredy cats. You guys stay here and die or whatever. I I am leaving. Tisk. Then he and his group lined up behind me. I looked at him for a moment. When I looked closely, I could see that he was shaking slightly. This was unexpected. I didn't think this idiot would move first. Next, the bomb girl with colorful hair approached me. I want to leave too it's so cold here. Hee <laughs> hee. Her expression was awkwardly stiff as if she were forcibly smiling. Anyone could tell she was trying to hide her fear. However, she stood firmly next to Mousen without expressing her feelings. And then, a group of subtle light came out of their bodies, and their stiff expressions gradually began to relax. Oh? Was this how the skill works? It seemed to not only have the AoE buff mentioned in the description, but also the effect of raising morale. The light that started like that began to spread more and more to its surroundings. Others didn't seem to be aware of the lights, but in my eyes, there was a bright swarm of lights permeating their bodies. Those who had a lost expression began to gather by me one by one with a shine in their eyes. I I suddenly feel like I can do anything? Yes. There's no way to stay here anyway. What's the big deal with robots anyway? I've already experienced it during the third test. And at some point, there was a group of brightly shining lights next to me. Who could look at them and think they were the same person? There was not a shadow of defeat or despair in their eyes. This, it was definitely effective? Brave warriors full of confidence in victory. On top of that, even if they don't look the part, they were actually talented people who were high-rank hero candidates. Even if the opponent was an A-rank hero with transcended abilities, if it was this much and along with my AoE buff, I thought it was a fight worth trying. This is fun. It felt like I was directly commanding units from an RTS game. I told them. Everyone, please let me know what your abilities are. Something like knowing your enemy and knowing yourself? To win this fight, I needed to understand the characteristics of the units I had. So I started to figure out everyone's abilities and characteristics for a while as a plan was devised to deal with the A-rank hero. And as a result, the most important people in this operation are Ajiasi and Nuna. And me? Huh? Me? Mousen who only had the talent to run away. And the bomb girl who was the worst team player but has overwhelming firepower. With the combination of these two, the A-rank hero will fall. There's a job I have for the two of you. 
Contrary to their puzzled expressions, I smiled confidently. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. What the hell, is that boy? Recalling the scenes she saw a moment ago, Samaria couldn't help but open her mouth a little. The image of Noah easily blocking the energy emitted by a giant mechanical dragon with his whole body. That's, impossible. She had seen that machine before. On the day Dr. J. Gal took the A-rank promotion test, she was also at the scene. The name of the technique was. Dr. J. Gal, who was considered highly versatile but weak in terms of firepower, in fact had earned A-rank just because of this killing blow. Frankly, she wasn't confident in taking such an attack with her body either. But he, a hero candidate who was only 13 years old. At first, she thought he was just the kind of person who had no hesitation to kill. But looking at the abilities he had shown so far, she began to think more and more that Pamir may be right. As someone who has lived for many years, she had never seen anyone with such diverse abilities at such a young age before. Choi Noah is unbelievable. She frowned. From what she had seen so far, there was no more doubt. Noah was definitely a warrior. What the hell do I do with him? Would it be better to give up on him now? She thought about it for a moment before shaking her head. Wait, that's not it. A warrior was an existence who could change fate. Then, if she could use him well, wouldn't he be able to solve even the shackles she had? Right. This is actually an opportunity. Her expression turned peaceful again. What was the probability that a warrior would appear in the world? There was no way of knowing, but it must be close to an astronomical low figure. And now an opportunity was in right front of her. If I can make a warrior into my own toy. Just imagining it, she already felt numb all over her body. Ah? It's not time for that here. A dormant, deep voice flowed out little by little. When Samaria's mana fluctuated, Pamir immediately looked back and asked. What's the matter? Is there something wrong? And no. The situation hasn't changed much. Hmm, well, it hasn't been long yet. I hope you keep watching and let me know. Yes. I will. Fortunately, Pamir moved on without any doubt. As he said, it was too short for something to happen, so it was plausible. Let's watch the situation a little more for now. Then, if I have the chance, I have to use a scapegoat for the warrior. She was drawing up a plan in one corner of her mind as she continued to observe Noah. After some time, Noah and the other candidates had gathered and began to move. Where are they heading? Nearly 100 people were dashing on the snowy field. Those who had the ability to move or accelerate supported those who lagged behind as they moved forward at a high speed. The figure was organized like a beast. Over there, it's near the base camp. Don't tell me they're going to attack it? That was too reckless. No matter how many numbers they have, the opponent was an A-rank hero. In particular, Dr. Jagel's specialty was defense and he could fortify and defend the base. Fortunately, however, the group would swerve and change directions to some extent as they ran. And at the forefront, there was a man dangling from a long wooden pole. He was the eldest son of the Deira family, famous for being a newbie hunter. The hell, what are they doing? She increased the output of her familiar, so she could overhear their conversations. How is it? Ajiasi? Do you sense you're going to die? Eh, D dangerous. I it's dangerous here. Okay. Everyone, to the left. They changed their direction in an orderly manner again. Unintelligible behavior. By making such a fuss, she was sure the robots would notice and rush at them. So why? Thus, the group circled around the snowfield for a while. And at some point. Eventually, robots throughout the snowy field had gathered and surrounded them. The number exceeded hundreds and was into the thousands. In addition, there were giant robots sparsely placed between the other robots as guards. The moment she saw it, she let out a short sigh. This, is the end. Will the warrior die here? Did she misunderstand? As soon as she thought that, suddenly, something could be seen from the gaze of one of her familiars floating in the distant sky. Above the sky and high enough to meet the gaze of her familiar. A baby angel who looked just like her familiars was flying with a woman dangling from it. This girl? She definitely remembered seeing her during one of the tests. A woman who had taken off her clothes and caused an explosion at the test site. But what's she doing up there? Did she run away by herself? At that moment, the angel who was holding the woman let go of his hand. Kayak. The woman crashed to the ground at a high speed. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. And. Boom. At an altitude before hitting the ground, a huge explosion occurred and was followed by a blinding light. Chapter 47. Boom. Light exploded in the distant sky. Dark clouds scattered in all directions, sprinkling thick snow, and early evening stars sparkled in the clear sky. And at that moment, the large robot army abruptly stopped their advancements. Crackle, crackle. Increasingly deep blue sparks popped from their bodies, and soon, only black smoke leaked out from the interiors. As they started malfunctioning, meaningless movements were repeated. W what happened? What's wrong with them? 
The candidates, who were preparing for a desperate battle to the death, watched on with puzzled looks. Meanwhile, some quick-witted people exclaimed. Oh, maybe? Electromagnetic pulse? Hearing the candidates, I smirked. A powerful EMP that comes after a nuclear explosion. The resulting heat and excess current phenomenon was enough to destroy the internal circuits of all electrical devices. As evidence, even the watches worn by the candidates were giving off black smoke. Frankly, I was surprised by this work. In fact, I had just copied the method I had seen in a game before, and didn't think it would succeed this easily. Thanks to this, the level of difficulty in targeting this raid had fallen as if a cheat code was used. The robot's mana core still remained, but the circuit that controlled it was completely broken. On top of that, their remaining mana was being used for self-repair, and all the barriers surrounding them like a coating had disappeared. The robots here on this snowy field were nothing more than ordinary scraps of metal. In other words, experience event. With mana circling my whole body, I ran forward before anyone else. Snow soared around me with each step. Wung. As my sword let out an eerie cry on the snowy field. Crack. The blade containing bright red mana penetrated one of the neutralized robot's mana core. And without slowing down, I immediately stepped on its shoulder and jumped into the middle of the enemy camp. Boom. The mana core exploded one step later and a shock wave was transmitted from behind. Landing on the ground, I lowered my posture and ran in a straight line. The malfunctioned robots in front of me were repeatedly swinging their swords. Dozens of blades fell from above my head. But, asterisk gas, those who weren't using their mana cores properly couldn't damage me at all. And for such robots, this skill was enough. Asterisk energy drain. Turning into a red fog, I flowed like a cloud and began sucking in the surrounding mana cores. Robots that have lost their power source collapsed to the ground one by one. The more robots around me collapsed, the more mana was rushing into my body. To digest the overabundant mana, I changed shape again and pulled out my sword. And then all the mana I've absorbed so far was assimilated. Wung, red mana overlaid the blade of red velvet curse. The concentration of mana became darker and darker, and finally it turned dark enough to look black. The grip of the sword fluctuated wildly. With my stats now, every stat was 4.0 or higher. On top of that, mana was inching close to 5.0. It was a force close to the peak of the zenith stage so even if it was a bit forced, I should be able to imitate it to some degree. I finally swung the blade of mana that had been compressed to its limits forward. Swoosh! A black crescent shape began to stretch endlessly as it cut through the robots. Swick! Swick! Sword power blast art. It wasn't imitated perfectly, but thanks to the abundant mana contained in it, the robot army fell like autumn leaves. Around me, a huge gap in the middle of the battlefield had appeared. And a pleasant message soon came. Ding! Level has risen. Haha, <laughs> very good. I can't believe there was such an efficient leveling spot in the world. Despite having cut many of the robots down, there wasn't even any indication that the numbers had been reduced. In addition, there was still a long time left before their self-repair was completed. So in the meantime, I have to gain as much experience as possible. However, I shouldn't eat this good thing alone. I summoned my cute children, Bulldog and al -Sun. A pair of red-hot eggs appeared on the snowy field. Go and eat as much as you want. My children started flying excitedly around the battlefield as they prey on the robots. Looking at it, I felt full even if it wasn't me eating. Ding. Level has risen. No, I was actually full even if I didn't eat. The experience they earned seemed to be delivered to me as well. Let's go and help him. Ora. Break all the damn things down. Eventually, other candidates also joined the battlefield. At other times, they wouldn't have been able to touch my experience but I decided to make a concession with a broad mind this time because I wouldn't be able to finish it within time anyway. Well, they shouldn't die against these robots. When I thought as such, a sharp woman's scream penetrated my ears. Kayak. I hurriedly turned my head with a pounding heart, and there, a naked woman without any clothes was seen falling from the sky. Ah, right. Exam number 04589 Bomb Girl, Saki. I was blind to the experience event, so I had forgotten about her. Ah, s someone. S save me. She struggled to live as she floundered her arms in the air. Not a single more person can die here. Furthermore, she was the number one contributor in this operation. And I never abandon those who have helped me. For those who contribute, they should be treated accordingly. I immediately summoned my familiar and sent it to her. The cute baby angel gently accepted her, who was plummeting at a high speed. Boom! Cook! She coughed up blood in the air and flew away. The angel that was hit by the impact was summoned back and I had no choice but to grab her who was falling into enemy territory. She flinched with her arms and legs drooped. Perhaps because she was naked, but it looked like a slug that had been sprinkled with salt. Hmm. Still, seeing her chest heave, 
fortunately, it seemed she was still breathing. Well, she's alive so it was fine. Now, more importantly, the experience event. Before this fever time was over, I had to hurry and gain experience. I carried her roughly on my shoulder and hunted the neutralized robots. On the way, some robots had finished repairing and attacked, but fortunately, no deaths occurred. Cool. Experience events are sweet. After all the hunting, when Bulldal and Al Sun had absorbed all the wastes. Level has risen. Level has risen. Level has risen. I had reached as high as level 48. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. When the battle in the snow ended, before I knew it, everywhere was covered with darkness. In fact, it was still only the afternoon, but the length of night was extremely long due to the high latitude. In that darkness, the robot army marched at a rapid pace. Although there were robots scattered along the way, they also had not recovered from the shock of the EMP, so it didn't take much time to deal with them. The lone robots fell one by one as we headed to the base camp. Then, in the snowy field surrounded by darkness, the only bright area came into view. T that's the place. The light pillar lit the surroundings of the base camp, making it as bright as day. And inside the base camp, a giant robot I had seen during one of the tests the other day stood as if it were defending the four corners while the remaining robots surrounded it as if standing guard. Hmm. Observing them from afar, I was certain that the robots were still strange. Their behaviors were just as unnatural as the other robots who were exposed to the EMP a while ago. However, that giant robot could be a problem. It was hard to tell anything from it because it just stood there like a stone statue and didn't show any other movement. Under such circumstances, it would be right to say that it was also affected by the EMP, but honestly, things couldn't have gone so easily. And most importantly, I've still yet to see Dr. J. Gal. Despite our progress, there wasn't even a shadow of the supervisor, the main culprit of this incident. Soon, Mousen, who was hanging from a long pole, shouted, Oh ominous! Ominous! If we go there, we'll definitely die. Ajiasi, you're sensing it's dangerous? Yes, I can feel death clearer than ever. It's the worst thing I've ever felt in my life. Hmm. Regardless of anything else, this guy's intuition was reliable. If so, it would be best not to enter there, but I couldn't give up the challenge after having come this far. I looked at the blue swirling portal in the middle of the base camp. We just needed to run all the way over there somehow. As soon as I thought about it over and over again, suddenly, someone's voice came from inside the base camp. Ha ha ha, you've made it this far. The candidate's heads turned at once. And there, stood Dr. J. Gal in a white gown. Somehow, his condition looked strange. Obviously, despite looking this way, his gaze was out of focus as if staring somewhere far away. He spoke in a relaxed tone. Honestly, I didn't expect you guys to come this far, but on the other hand, I was desperately begging you to come. Was he trying to show off? After losing most of his troops in vain, Dr. J. Gal still had a smile on his face. What do you mean? Hmm? You're the one who dared to take the Sechungdan from me at that time. Hee <laughs> hee, this just happened to be the perfect opportunity. Even if it wasn't, there was something I really wanted to show you. And soon, he began to take off his clothes. The naked body of the ugly dwarf was clearly revealed under the light pillar. Hmm? Was that what he wanted to show? That's ridiculous. I focused on his behavior and observed every move so as not to miss it. Suddenly, the man spread his body wide and shouted. Now, look at it clearly. My body. Fuck. This son of a bitch was a pervert. Somehow, I thought it was unusual since he was still wearing a bow tie, but he must be a very vicious pervert among perverts. Soon, he quietly continued. Thanks to this hideous look, I had to endure the years of contempt, always being discriminated against. No, it was probably because he's a pervert. Wung. I pulled out my sword. He shouldn't be given time to play tricks. No matter how much I studied and developed my skills, other heroes were always rated higher. Mana was added to Red Velvet Curse, as it heated up red and let out an eerie aura. You think I didn't want to learn martial arts? As an ordinary person, I was always envious of those who could learn martial arts. I hated your brilliant talent. There was no robot near him. Then, the opportunity was only now. It should be possible. I whispered quietly to the candidates behind me. Run straight to the portal when I give the signal. Be but the supervisor. I'll figure it out on my own. Oh okay. The short war meeting ended. All that's left was execution. I had only one chance. The distance from him was about 20 meters. But now it's different. That person gave me a new blessing. I can now use martial arts now. You aha. Asterisk charges remaining, 0 slash 3. The world turned red. Even the snow falling from the sky seemed to have stopped. I shot forward like lightning in the stationary world. In an instant, the figure of the guy was just a step away. My blade, which had been injected with mana in advance, fell towards his neck. Swish. Done. His neck was certainly cut. 
The slowed time regained its original state, and I shouted to the candidates. Now, but at that moment, I was seized by a strange sense of oddity, as if something was missing. What was it? And soon I realized the reason. There was no blood on my blade. I immediately looked back. Blood wasn't flowing from Dr. Jagel's body either. Ha ha. It's useless. You're trying to kill me with such an attack. Dr. Jagel, who was cut said. What's going on here? Well, who cares? It was complicated in my head, but if he wasn't dead, I'd just have to kill him again. Wielding my sword, I ran straight at him. At that moment. Boom. Suddenly, purple ominous energy exploded from his body. Cook. I was pushed back by the backlash, and my body rolled across the snowfield. Meanwhile, from Dr. Jagel's cut head, bloody flesh began to grow. Look. This is the completed ultimate body. At the same time, robot parts scattered all around me began to stick to the chunk of flesh. As such, he rapidly grew. The hideous appearance was as if a hellish monster and cutting-edge technology had been combined. And at some point, Dr. J. Gal had transformed into a machine in the form of a devil. A purple haze swirled ominously around him. Ha ha ha, how is it? Isn't it surprising? The moment I stood facing him, the thought that I could never win crossed my mind. It was hard to breathe under the heavy pressure, as sweat flowed down my spine regardless of my will. If his ability in numbers was recognized as A-rank, now, as he said, he alone was exuding the pressure of an A-rank transcendent. This is the perfect harmony between technology and martial arts. There are already countless martial arts data stored in this body. Shaolin? Or fist arts? Tell me anything. I'll show you it. I had a thought while looking at this guy who was drunk on his power. Now was the only chance I had. I immediately turned around and ran toward the portal. Fortunately, the others had almost arrived at the portal. Circling mana around my whole body, I ran with all my might. Then, at that moment, where are you going like that? As I glanced back, I saw energy particles clumping together behind his back and forming something like that of a devil's wings. You guys can't run away from me. Boom. A deafening explosion burst out. And when I came to my senses, he had already arrived in front of the portal. This was really ridiculous. I thought of all the cards I had in my head, but I couldn't think of any ways to win. The game balance was a mess. Think of it as an honor. You'll be the first to see this body use martial arts. He pulled a beam sword from his waist. Energy reminiscent of hellfire was burning around the beam sword. The appearance resembled the final weapon found in some FPS games. Something, an answer. There was a portal right in front of me, but I couldn't overcome it and could only gradually retreat. After stepping back little by little, thud, my back touched something hard. There was no place to back down anymore. At that moment, a status window popped up in front of me. Classification, Battle Mount. Grade, C, Damaged, A Grade. Description, the body of one of the four Heavenly King series created by the genius engineer Dr. J. Gal. Boasts durability as hard as earth. Hmm? Looking back, I saw the robot that I had damaged the other day. Hee <laughs> hee, yes. Come out from there one by one. I promise to let you live if you can take one of my techniques. Ah, it's over. And no, we still have hope. What hope? How are you going to take a technique from that monster? The candidates began to criticize each other and bicker. Ignoring them, I looked at the robot. This, was also an item? Then maybe. Okay, who will be first? You, the black-haired boy. It'll be your honor to be the first one to die. Boom boom. The giant mechanical devil approached me in stride. The ground tilted, and even breathing became difficult due to the pressure emitted by him. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. In that kind of situation, I took out some useful items and spoke quietly. Synthesize. Immediately, the steel giant began to emit light. Chapter 48. Vicious mana hit the ground. A deafening explosion reverberated, evaporating the snow and turning it into white steam in an instant. Bright magma flowed where the beam sword had fallen. Noah could no longer be seen. Quaha. There's not even a trace left of his body. The hybrid devil, tangled with veins and wires, laughed loudly. Mousen, who had been watching, shouted. No. The boy was dead. A monster-like guy who seemed impossible to kill had disappeared without a trace. Still, what was this rising anger he was feeling? How dare you? You son of a bitch. Reason was paralyzed. Before he knew it, he had taken out his family's treasure and was charging at the devil with the tunfaz. He had just wanted to pass the exam with the useful help of the boy. He certainly didn't have to keep his loyalty. It was strange even when he thought about it. He was someone who would use anything at his disposal, and it was normally his style to only do what benefited him. So he didn't know why he had made this decision. However, he wasn't the only one with such feelings, as other applicants around him had also taken out their weapons and were charging at Dr. J. Gal. You crazy murderer. Go to hell you son of a bitch. I'm going to kill you. Ha ha ha. Good. 
Very good. A hero shouldn't pretend to ignore the crisis of their colleagues. For the attitude score, I'll give you full marks. Dr. J. Gal put down his weapon and aimed at the candidates with his fingertip as if he was joking. However, I can't believe you're rushing in without properly grasping the opponent's capabilities. For the judgment score, you're disqualified. Boom. Kihoek. Kayak. The candidates were simply hit by one finger, but they were thrown across the ground as they vomited blood. Soon, those who were preparing an attack from a distance shouted. Attack. Psychic powers, magic, arrows, etc., various projectiles were fired at the mechanical devil. But looking at the attacks, Dr. J. Gal spoke leisurely. Oh, good. Long-range attacks are more effective than close-range attacks when dealing with large enemies. But, the cylinder mounted on the devil's face emitted steam, and soon the jaw joint opened wide. Then, all the projectiles were sucked into his mouth. At some point, the projectiles had become lumped together, resulting in a high-density energy sphere. The attacks they had fired with all their might, conversely, were now being directed at them. D-dodge. Boom. The high-speed attack hit the ground and created a huge explosion. The candidates hurriedly scattered in all directions, but those who couldn't escape the attack had disappeared without even being able to scream. Attacks without familiarizing yourself with the opponent are bound to come back as a bigger threat. Therefore, for the strategic score, you're also disqualified. Kuhuk. Shit. It's hopeless. The candidates, who had been moving together thus far as a group and had unknowingly developed a camaraderie, all sighed in unison. Looking at them, Dr. J. Gao spoke. Ha ha ha. Don't be so sad. No one will be able to leave here today anyway. The hybrid devil swung his beam sword as if he was excited. And each time, the candidates would run for cover with all their might. E everyone, run to the portal. That's our last hope. When someone shouted, they all rushed toward the portal. However, Dr. J. Gal didn't stand still and watch. Ridiculous. Clank. Clank. The devil's left arm transformed into a vicious-looking gun barrel. Then, an energy mass shot out and flew towards the direction the candidates were running. Boom. The blue portal, which was swirling brightly, broke like a toy. And no. Shit. There was no longer a way to escape from here. Driven to despair, screams could be heard all around. It's really the end this time. Mousen thought as he saw it. Even without the ability to sense death, everyone here could feel that it would be difficult to survive. Strangely enough, however, they weren't afraid of death. They were just angry that they couldn't punch Dr. J. Gal. I couldn't take revenge for him. As someone who was treated as a troublemaker in his family for having failed the hero exam for the last 10 years, there was no way he could win against such a terrifying monster. Nevertheless, he gripped his ton faws. Did it know how he felt? The spirit weapon, which he would usually force to respond to his call, was now roaring with hot flames. Are you all going to die like cowards? At least the last breath, like him, let's behave like heroes. Raising their heads one by one, the surviving candidates gathered around Mousen. Yeah, we're going to die anyway, let's give it a try. Fuck. What do you mean die? We're going to kill that son of a bitch and live. Those who once dreamed of becoming heroes, stood face to face against an impossible ordeal. Mousen, who was at the forefront, shouted. Come on. You fucking midget. Stop dragging your feet and bring it on. Huh. How dare you insult the exam supervisor. You have guts. If it's your wish to die like that. Dr. J. Gal raised his beam sword high. Steam spewed out the cylinder mounted on his body. You're all disqualified. The moment the blade fell. Flutter. The candidates, who were gritting their teeth, at the end of their gaze, they could see a red cape flapping in the wind. At the same time, a steel giant could be seen blocking the falling blade with a brilliant shield. Boom. Kiek. Dr. J. Gal scowled, taking a step back due to the backlash from the shield. Soon, a familiar voice flowed from the steel giant. No. My reward. It was Noah's voice that everyone thought was dead. After confirming the voice, Mousen's nerves relaxed. Yes. I knew it. There was no way such a monstrous guy would die so easily. Even though the opponent was an A-rank hero that transcended the human limits, a groundless belief began to rise that if it was the boy, then he would be able to do it somehow. Haha, <laughs> you fucking midget. Looks like you're dead now. The laugh of Mousen, it resembled when he had bullied the weak in the past. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Synthesis completed. The synthesis materials and are destroyed. All option slots used. Selected option removed. The damage and appearance state has changed depending on the characteristics of the materials used. Received. Classification. Battle mount. Grade. A. Description. A masterpiece robot of the Four Heavenly Kings series created by the genius engineer Dr. J. Gal. Boasts durability as hard as earth. Someone seemed to have tried to improve it but there's no significant improvement to the original performance. Success. Thanks to synthesizing items that were related to vitality and recovery, the damaged area had returned to normal as expected. 
It was quite heartbreaking to throw away the newly acquired items without having the chance to properly use them, but there was no other way now. In any case, that was really dangerous. My spine was still flowing with sweat when I recalled the blade that fell toward me. I would have been helpless against it if the item synthesis hadn't been completed and I hadn't entered the robot in time. And fortunately, there have been no additional attacks since. It seemed he didn't know I was inside here. Some time was bought. The problem hasn't been completely solved yet. I still have some time to spare, so I had to figure out the space I am currently in. I thought the robot's interior would be more complex and full of unidentified switches, but surprisingly, it was simple. Mechanical parts covered my body like armor and curved screens occupied everything in front of me. It was as if I was wearing a well-made VR game device. But how do I move this? Since I had synthesized it, I'm certain the ownership had been handed to me, but it would be a difficult situation if I needed to start the engine or something else. As soon as I thought that, green characters suddenly rose above the darkened monitor. Fortunately, the language was Korean. Deletion of existing user data completed. Checking the boarding of a new user. Please enter your name. Like when making a character for the first time, an empty space was blinking in front of my eyes. Sure enough, that was how it worked. Choi Noah. After saying my name, a loading bar that resembled the shape of a human body appeared on the screen. The ugly dwarf's sense for creating a UI was rather excellent, as a gauge could be seen filling up starting at the feet. Entering data of new user biometric. Current synchronization rate, 5%, 5 minutes left. 5 minutes. It wasn't a long time under normal circumstances, but with the urgent ongoing battle, the short time felt too long. Boom. Perhaps the guy was rampaging outside, but heavy vibrations were transmitted into the robot. However, since the display was still off, I had no choice but to be nervous. This was troublesome. At this rate, the reward I have been struggling to get may be blown away. Looking at the screen, the gauge was rising at a slow speed. Please, hang in there a little longer. While praying for the warrior's safety, I stared at the screen. And then finally, the loading was done. Finished. Synchronization completed. Please set up a code for operating the robot. My time was urgent, so what's this? Not caring about this or that, I spat out a phrase that came to mind. God game level up quest. Password setting completed. Operation will now start. Immediately, the inside of the robot lit up. The surrounding situation was displayed on one of the screens in front of me. The base camp had turned into ruins. The portal was broken into an unknown shape, and the land was terribly melted here and there. And most of all, what made me angry the most was that the people I had struggled to bring here were bleeding and lying on the ground. My reward. The son of a bitch dwarf was seen raising his sword at the surviving candidates. More than half were already dead, it was no longer acceptable for any more to die here. My body instinctively moved. The parts of the robot connected to my body were precisely interlocked, and the robot's arms and legs immediately reacted. Boom. I ran straight towards the candidates and activated. No. My reward. Boom. With the backlash, Dr. J. Gal took several steps back. Certainly, with the effect of resisting evil and demon properties, the skill boasted an excellent result. And the man, who had come to his senses to some extent, looked at me with a very shocked expression. H. How are you alive? No. How are you controlling one of my four heavenly kings? No one should be able to move it except for me. Instead of answering, I rushed straight at the guy with my shield. Boom. A shield charge as if I was using a siege weapon. Due to the collision, snow was instantly pushed aside and piled up. It wasn't really a skill, but considering the mass of my robot, it was a force that can't be scoffed at. But, like a nail stuck to the floor, Dr. J. Gal didn't even budge. Kuhei, okay. I don't know how you're moving my robot, but it's just scrap metal that I don't need anymore. Rather, it would be nice to break down the remnants of my past to celebrate my rebirth. Saying so, he ignored my shield and threw me to the ground. Boom. Cook. The ground cracked and the temporary provisional buildings near the base camp collapsed. As expected. No matter how advanced science is, nothing beats moving your own body. Boom. Boom. Dr. J. Gal began to kick me indiscriminately after I had fallen. Like a neighborhood thug that didn't know any martial arts. But even with such simple kicks, there was no way for my robot to respond. My armor was crushed, and on one of the screens, a warning window for the damaged area was constantly blinking. The difference in robots was too big. It could be said that the weight class was adjusted to some extent once I had mounted the robot, but the gap between me and him was still as wide as that of kindergartner and middle school student. On top of that, I didn't even have a decent weapon. Ha ha. Die. 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 The guy who had been kicking me for a long time suddenly grabbed me by the leg and spun me as he threw. Boom. I, who had bounced off the snowy field like a skipping stone, collapsed, and became entangled with the other four heavenly king's bodies who stood as if they were ornaments in the base camp. Warning. 
the damage to the robot is serious. The user is encouraged to escape immediately. 60% power failure. 73% damage to the outer armor. Red warning windows constantly rose in front of my eyes. Soon, Dr. J. Gal spoke. Let's really end it now. Taking out his beam sword, he slowly began to walk toward me. My weak past self, it will disappear forever from today. There was no hurry in his steps. Perhaps he thought this was the end. Well, I thought it would be hard to win. I couldn't help but curse at his attitude. But, it would be a pity to give up here. In fact, the moment I had succeeded in synthesizing this robot, I had an idea in my head. If robot mounts were classified as items, then, what would happen if I synthesized the other series of robots here? A while ago, I had to run suddenly to save the reward, but in fact, I had wanted to solve this question first. I'm a gamer and the spirit of experimentation was one of the most important virtues of gamers. I checked the information of the other four Heavenly King series robots tangled next to me one by one. Classification, Battle Mount. Grade, A. Description, the body of one of the four Heavenly King series created by the genius engineer Dr. J. Gal. Boasts output as explosive as fire. Classification, Battle Mount. Grade, A. Description, the body of one of the four Heavenly King series created by the genius engineer Dr. J. Gal. Boasts speed as fast as the wind. Classification, Battle Mount. Grade, A. Description, the body of one of the four Heavenly King series created by the genius engineer Dr. J. Gal. Boasts mana flow as gentle as water. I looked at these items and shouted. Synthesize. Then, with an intense light that only I could see, the tangled robots began to change. Clank. Clank. The outer armors fell off as each part exquisitely fit and was reborn into a new shape. Some of the parts turned into a sharp sword, while other parts turned into thick armor that covered the body. And. Clank. Boom. A red cape fluttered as my steel giant stood up and its pitch black body was reflected in the light. Said item has been identified. Special effect is activated. For fused items, you can separate them into individual items at any time. Fusion completed. Received. Classification, Battle Mount. Grade, S. Description, a dream a genius engineer couldn't reach. Fusion? As someone who had played one round already, I didn't even know there was such an option in the synthesis menu. Seeing the robot assembled like this, somehow, my heart began to heat up. And in the end, I, couldn't hold back my excitement and shouted. Yes. This is it. I didn't care about winning or losing anymore. Because. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. This fusion was the dream of all men. God game. Chapter 49. An ominous swirling red portal. Pamir, who was observing it, felt that something was out of place. Strange. Ordinary people were likely to mistake portals for concepts similar to spatial movement, but in fact, the two abilities had completely different principles. A portal was the construction of a passage between dimensions. In other words, it could be seen as similar to drilling a tunnel on the highway. Therefore, even if someone didn't have any special ability, with permission, anyone could use the passage. However, on the contrary, the disadvantage of drilling such tunnels between dimensions was that it consumed an enormous amount of energy. Why did the demons place a portal in such an inefficient place? Were they planning to send a large army through here? However, those who were gathered here were aspiring heroes at best. If the demons wanted to cause trouble, there were certainly other ways that were just as sufficient without the need to mobilize an army. I can't understand it. As soon as he got closer to the portal, suddenly, something popped out of the vortex and grabbed his ankles. Shit. Light green tentacles covered with sticky mucus. The tentacles rapidly extended as it tried to wrap itself around his body. Swike. He immediately pulled out his sword and cut off the tentacles. At the same time, the cut tentacles split into dozens of strands and rushed toward him in unison. Oh Almighty, light up the darkness. A sacred light bursts out from his body. The tentacles faltered and hovered around him. Don't tell me demons are really going to come through this portal? And as if his idea was right, strange monsters began to cross over from the portal one by one. All of such monsters he had never seen before. Damn vile creatures. How dare you aim at the body of the messenger of God. Pamir scowled. Originally, he wasn't going to involve himself in anything other than finding the warrior, but he had changed his mind when he saw these corrupted creatures, beings that stood against the beliefs of the god he served. Pamir, what's the matter? You don't need to pay it any mind. Just a bunch of bugs that suddenly crawled out from nowhere. Chong. He pulled out his sword again. Oracle's fate wouldn't change even if he got rid of these things slash. No matter what variables appear, the prophecy was absolute. So it won't interfere with finding the warrior. The moment he was about to swing his sword, suddenly, a blinding white light burst out from the snowy sky far away. Bang! An explosion from a high altitude where the height couldn't be measured. He turned his head and looked at the scene. 
What's that? Something seemed to be happening. He looked straight at Samaria and shouted. What happened? What was that explosion? Samaria frowned and spoke. I'm saying this just in case, but don't misunderstand. I didn't mean not to cooperate, but I didn't know that would happen. Shit. Everything is going wrong at times like this. Demons crawled out and grabbed their ankles as if on cue. What's the situation right now? Swike. Pamir asked, cutting down the monsters that constantly blocked him. That's. I can't trust you anymore if you keep being like this. Heretic. If you don't tell me the truth, I'll report all of this to the Noble Council. Samaria then sighed and replied. Currently, the candidates are united and heading toward the base camp. They chose to fight, in the meantime, these guys are really annoying. Even as they were talking, monsters continued to crawl out. The whole area around the portal was filled with the dead bodies of the monsters, but they continued to rush at Pamir and Samaria without any hesitation. Their purpose seemed to be catching them and stalling time rather than harming them. This looks like a trap prepared by the demons in advance. It seems they have a reason to keep us here. I don't know how they knew we would be here, but I guess so. So you better go and watch the situation there first. Pamir said as he slowly put his sword back into its sheath. And then he immediately scattered sacred light in all directions. Swike. A momentary gap had appeared on the battlefield. Then, during that brief moment, Samaria spread her wings and flew up. You go ahead first. I'll quickly clean up these guys and meet up with you after. Okay. So Samaria left Pamir alone and chased after Noah who was heading to the base camp. A smile bloomed on her face. I don't know what's going on, but I can't believe it's working out like this. Thanks to this, I was able to get rid of that annoying bastard. If so, there was still a possibility for her. A way to not have Noah taken away. Samaria crossed the sky at high speed. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Pitch black armor plastered all over the body and a red cape that fluttered like a mythical hero. And even a helmet with fierce horns as if it was a devil. The steel giant in black armor stood tall on the snowy field. PSH. Steam came out of the Dark Knight's body as snowflakes rising in all directions were illuminated by the pillar of light. The Dark Knight's size was about three times larger than that of Dr. J. Gal. In front of it, Dr. J. Gal felt as if he had returned to his dwarf days. He spoke in a trembling voice. What the hell is happening? He was certain the robot the boy was commanding was the robot had designed himself. Therefore, he knew its limitations better than anyone else. He wasn't sure what kind of trick the boy pulled, but those robots didn't have the function of merging in the first place. Robots were precise machines with countless delicate interconnected parts. They all have their own roles and functions. In other words, you couldn't just stick it together like a toy. It was something that could only appear in cartoons. He, who once believed in science and reason more than anyone else, unknowingly shouted. This doesn't make sense. He felt like the common sense he had accumulated throughout his life had been shattered. If the boy could improve his robots so easily, then what does that say about all of the years of hard work he had put in? He he, isn't this great? He could hear the boy's voice from the giant in front of him. A tone as if he was happy to have gotten a new toy. Such an attitude made Dr. Jagel's consciousness recede. You punk. Regardless, it was still a robot. There was a limit to its capabilities to operate mana and use martial arts. Compared to the large scrap of metal, the current him had nothing to be afraid of. After turning one arm into a gun, Dr. Jagal fired an energy bullet. Boom. The boy couldn't even properly react to the bullet and was hit directly. But. Impossible. There wasn't even a scratch on the armor. It went beyond reason. What kind of metal in the world can just withstand this? Even if tensile strength and hardness were increased, it was impossible. Why do you keep saying it doesn't make sense? Boom. The giant black knight crouched like a person preparing for a race. Commonly referred to as the ready position. Did he think he could run fast if he crouched down like that? It seemed the boy didn't even know the basics of controlling a robot. A robot's joints were designed to be efficient without having to move in the same way as humans. Rather, such an unstable posture could be said to put a load on the robot who had a huge mass. But. PSH. White steam spewed out from around the robot's body. And at one point, a huge building was flying at a speed close to the speed of sound. Papa Papa. The ground shattered as it was with every step, and the hot spring that Oymukon boasts rose high in the sky. Then. Boom. Kyuk. With a deafening crash, the robot passed by after ramming into Dr. Jagel's body. Dr. Jagel flew into the air before crashing to the ground. Where the boy had passed, an explosion and a fierce storm burst out. Dr. Jagal looked down at his body. The upper right of his body had disappeared. It had instantly evaporated after being struck by the terrifying energy created by the robot's overwhelming mass and speed. His own body which was stronger than steel. Pain came a step late. Quack. As the robot continued to charge due to the momentum, eventually it became trapped in one corner by itself. Boom. In the meantime, Dr. Jagal hurriedly raised his body. 
It was only one attack, but the damage was too severe. He had to recover before the robot came after him again. Cook, I it's dangerous if this continues. He moved out of the base camp and urgently began to look for robot parts. However, shit, where is it? Why couldn't he see any robot parts? Strangely enough, no damaged robots were seen. If the candidates had defeated so many troops, there was bound to be at least some debris somewhere in this snow field, but at best, there were only a few broken limbs. Absorbing these wasn't enough to fill him. Not enough. It's not enough. But right then, whoosh, snow was rising from the end of his field of view, and something could be seen rushing his way. It was the boy. The giant dark knight was running straight at him. And no. Dr. Jagal pulled out his sword. The beam sword rose. A destructive energy surged, and among the martial arts he had collected in the past, he searched for the most suitable martial art for the current situation. Just in time, as a result of his search, a usable martial art came to mind. It was a martial art that had been created by a peerless one-hand master in his later years. The data entered his mind and was automatically acquired by his body. Accordingly, he operated his mana and his armor changed position as he prepared for the incoming attack. Papa Papa! Coniferous forests along the Dark Knight's path were pulled out like weeds. It was coming closer and closer. Come, let's fight to the death. Dr. Jagal swung his beam sword the moment he saw the Dark Knight. Boom, but it was of no use. Just an overwhelming mass and power. All weapons and martial arts became useless in front of it. The beam sword Dr. Jagal was so proud of fell far away across the ground. This can't be. The Dark Knight picked up the beam sword that had fallen. And then the boy shouted in a happy voice. Oh, a beam sword. Soon, he wrapped it around his waist. Meanwhile, Dr. Jagal could only watch as all of his scientific common sense vanished. The beam sword was absorbed into the Dark Knight's body like a snake. And immediately, its body began to change. Red energy particles lit up the entire body like a lamp and a blade made of light formed from the back of its hand. T that's ridiculous. What in the world was that? What was that phenomenon that goes beyond any scientific logic? Sheik. The energy was injected like a rocket behind the Dark Knight's elbow. And with that momentum, its fist struck Dr. Jagal abdomen. Rocket punch. Keek. Dr. Jagal flew away like a sandbag. Coniferous forests that grew high behind his back constantly broke. But the speed wasn't decreasing at all. How far did he fly? As soon as he thought that, in front of him who was flying in the air, the Black Devil appeared again. Rocket kick. Flames ignited behind the heel of the Dark Knight and a kick was sent. Boom. Dr. Jagal, who had managed to hold on to his blurred consciousness, flew into the air again. And after that, he was constantly kicked around the base camp. Boom. Boom. Then, more and more armor fell off Dr. Jagal's body. The body of steel, which was thought to be best, was breaking more and more with each attack. After losing both arms and legs and turning into something like a ball, the Dark Knight slammed him down from the sky. Boom. A huge crater had formed in the middle of the base camp and Dr. Jagal's body was stuck helplessly. Boom, boom. The impact collapsed the mountain peak of the nearby snow mountain, and an avalanche occurred. Kuh, kuh. In his blurred consciousness, Dr. Jagal was barely able to hold on to his senses. And then, the devil in black armor who was approaching caught his eyes. The Dark Knight grabbed him out of the ground and threw him up and down as if he was playing with a ball. Yuck. Is this the end already? There's still time left for my transformation. Dr. Jagal couldn't sense any crisis or tension in the boy's voice. Just simple entertainment. It was like a child who had gotten a new toy and couldn't control himself because he wanted to keep playing with it. Not a great cause, ambition, or to save mankind. Was his life going to end by such a simple child's joke? This, this can't be. He had tried all his life. To overcome the limitations of his body with science and technology. To hone his own skills and survive in his family of demons. But in the end, it was all false power. In the absence of robots, he was nothing. How long was it that he had to admire his siblings? However, he walked his path silently and stubbornly. That was all he could do alone. And last night, he had met a great being and through his grace, his fate was changed and he was reborn with a new body. Finally, he was able to use martial arts with his body. Now no one would be able to look at him and say that he was just an ordinary old man if it weren't for his robots. That was what he thought. But, how could I lose? Dr. J. Gal rolled like a ball and screamed. The ideal he once dreamed of while studying science and technology was now in front of him. The power that he thought would be impossible through science had been completed by a little boy. After realizing that fact, he only felt that it was unfair. He had already abandoned such robots, but they were originally his. The essence of his efforts that had been honed for many years. Gee give it back. T that's mine. Hyohu, supervisor, you can't ride this because you don't have arms and legs anyway. In the meantime, the Dark Knight looked around. 
Soon after, he gathered the snow around and packed it tightly into a large snowball. Then, he placed Dr. Jagel's body on top of it as if he was making a snowman. Hmm, it's a little better like this. W what are you trying to do? Please stay still. There has been something I've always wanted to do whenever I saw a robot. The Dark Knight slowly pulled out a sword. A giant steel sword that was shaped like a bastard sword. On top of such a sword, there was a red energy swaying, the same as what he had used a while ago. In that state, he splendidly turned the sword and stretched it diagonally in front of Dr. J. Gal. The Dark Knight's cape fluttered behind its back. The moment Dr. J. Gal saw that, he realized what posture the boy was in. He admired strength more than anything else when he was young, so he could tell because he loved robot cartoons more than anyone else. That was a regular pose for robot warriors in cartoons. The boy was reenacting a scene. Supervisor, can you give a villain-like reaction? I don't think it would taste good otherwise. Hmm, you're not as fun as I thought. The Dark Knight lifted its sword and slashed it at Dr. J. Gal as if the boy had lost his excitement. Swike. Thus, Dr. J. Gal, an A-rank hero who was once called a one-man army, had met his end by the very same robots he had once called his own. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. The startup time is over. Robot will go into a cooldown. A battery warning indicator appeared on a display in front of me. Hmm. Unfortunately, the time was over. There were some more things I wanted to try, but for the time being, it seemed I should put them into my inventory until the cooldown was up. But I would be able to use it next time when I have another chance. As soon as I thought that, messages came to my mind. Level has risen. Level has risen. Level has risen. You've reached level 51. Gained a fragment of growth. Gained level 50 skill selection. Gained achievement title skilled warrior. Gained achievement title doom slayer. A feast of endless messages. And the result was level 51. This number still didn't feel real. Certainly, before taking the hero exam a few days ago I was only level 39 with the average stat being around 3. In fact, even 3 alone was enough for me to exert Herculean strength. But now. Body. 4.60. Dexterity, 4.13. Mana, 4.85. Spirit, 4.48. Asterisk 12 fragments of growth. In addition, there were 12 fragments that could be used. At my current pace of growth, there was no need to distribute them in one stat anymore. I distributed the stat evenly again this time. And as a result, body, 4.60-5.05, plus 0.45, 4 pieces. Dexterity, 4.13-4.28 plus 0.15, one piece. Mana, 4.85-5.08, plus 0.23, two pieces. Spirit, 4.48-5.06, plus 0.58, five pieces. Ah, good, good. Except for dexterity, which affected swordsmanship and technique, the remaining stats have now exceeded 5.0. Although it took more fragments to increase my stats the higher the stats were, if it was this much, then it was still good. Originally, my current stats were the equivalent of me being above level 70, assuming that the fragments rolled well. However, this time, the gap had immediately narrowed after I ate the Maryongdon and Sochongdon. If I were to express my current level, my body and skills were close to the peak of a zenith martial artist, and the mana power could be said to be at the level of a five-circle mage. In addition, considering the skills I had, there will be no one who could stop me at this point except for A-rank heroes. No, maybe I could deal with the weak ones among A-rank heroes. It was truly a crazy growth. Even I thought that my development was crazy. I was just a boy who couldn't even beat a single gangster just a few months ago. Now, even in this huge city of Pyongyang, I've grown to the point where except for a few, it would be difficult to find an opponent. It was really going smoothly. I smiled to the fullest and recalled the robots. At that moment. Wah! Deafening cheers greeted me. Survivors ran to me in tears. Reputation has increased. Choi Noah! Choi Noah! Choi Noah! Reputation has increased. Why were they calling my name? My reputation level was rising to the point where it was hard to follow it with my eyes. Ah, right. I was so excited by the robot fusion that I had forgotten about the situation for a moment. The fact that I and these guys were on the verge of death just a few minutes ago. But it wasn't just me. Whoever it was, I think they would have forgotten that fact as well. After all, fusion was a man's dream that no one could suppress. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to you, I was able to survive. Choi Noah, thank you. After this exam, please pay my family a visit. And, I'm really sorry about what happened before. At the forefront of the crowd was Saki and Mausen. They were tearing up, perhaps because they were happy too. It was only now that everything was over. All that was left was to go home safely. Well, in the worst case, the Hero Association will send people here after three days. 
fortunately, I had appetizing foods in my inventory that would last that time. But as soon as I thought that, at some point, a man was standing in front of me, without any notice, sense, or sound. When I suddenly came to my senses, there was only a man standing in front of me. I felt a sense of deja vu. It was similar to when the devil, person, came to recruit me in the first round. Nice to meet you. Noah Choi. A man with a mustache greeted me. I don't know when the other guys around me had collapsed, but they were all sprawled out on the ground. In any case, I remember seeing this guy before. Jonggak Pyongyang terrorist incident. He had clearly introduced himself as a devil at that time. An update two decades early. The culprit was now in front of me. I immediately took out red velvet curse and cut him. Swike. A neat solid line was formed over the neck of the man. However, there was no taste of cutting on my fingertips. Sure enough, the line I had just cut turned blurry and then disappeared. Soon after, the man appeared again with a smile on his face. Ha ha, that's my afterimage. He was strangely angry in his tone. He continued. Do you have time to talk with me for a while? Swike. Ha ha ha. It's useless. I'm telling you that's my afterimage. I stared at him as I quietly put away my sword. This was already something that I had experienced in the past, so I knew well that my attacks were useless. Looking at him like that, the man nodded. No wonder why I kept thinking that our plan was going to fail, this has made it clear. The test was worth taking risks. What do you mean? Haha, <laughs> I didn't think it would really exist. However, it's such an honor to meet you like this, beast of chaos. Beast of chaos? What kind of nonsense was this? He referred to me as something I've only heard of for the first time in my life. I waited for a while, but he didn't seem to want to explain the meaning. Soon, he said the same lines I had heard a long time ago. Choi Noah, how about joining the demon army? The content started as early as 20 years, but the process was the same. After hearing the line, I couldn't help but laugh. Let me guess, you want my help in conquering Earth? Oh, how did you know? As expected, you're definitely the beast of chaos. Then, it would be a natural choice to help the demon race, right? Beast or whatever but frankly, I don't want to do it. What, why? If you join the demon army, you can enjoy a lot of power when you conquer this world in the future, and if you want strength, I can. He repeated the lines I had heard in the past. It wasn't my cup of tea to hear what I've already heard again. Or, repeating the route that had already been completed again. Wung. Swike. I swung my sword while he was caught off guard. This time, it was only a little, but it was delicious. Sure enough, a light solid line was drawn on his neck. Can I take this as a rejection? I aimed the tip of my sword at him without saying a word. Honestly, there was no more means to use in the current situation, and there was no guarantee of beating him, but frankly, my pride as a gamer didn't allow me to repeat content I've already cleared. As I stared at him and waited for an opportunity, the man sighed and spoke. It's unavoidable. If possible, I didn't want to use this method on the beast of chaos. An ominous haze swayed from his body. It was the very same purple energy I often witnessed during the second round. At that moment, a woman's voice was heard. Stop. When I turned my head, the psycho woman called Santa Samaria was seen flying toward here. She immediately folded her wings and plunged down. The speed was almost as fast as light. And then she stretched her arms forward to catch me. But. Boom. Cook. Samaria couldn't reach me. There was a transparent barrier between me and her. Perhaps because of the backlash at the speed at which she flew, she slipped to the ground and vomited blood. Ha ha ha, we better move from here. And no. That's mine. Immediately, a red portal appeared behind his back. Oh. Perfect timing. He grabbed me by the arm. And again, without even realizing it, a change came. The white snow field had suddenly turned into a red-hot desert terrain. In the sky, ominous mana could be seen swirling, and something unpleasant and sticky mixed in the air could be felt each time I inhaled. Welcome to the demon world. He bowed elegantly and greeted me. Then, raising his head, I could see a sharpness in his eyes. Then, shall we continue? Again, a purple haze rose around him. Perhaps because this place was the demon world, but the energy was much denser and thicker than before. I immediately turned around and widened the distance, but the purple energy quickly blocked my retreat and poured into me. It's less painful if you would just accept it. Through every gap in my body, the ominous smoke permeated. But, I couldn't feel the pain he was talking about. Rather, my head felt clearer and more refreshed. Soon, a message window popped up in front of me. You've xxxxxxxxxx. Due to xxxxxx all of your stats temporarily increased. What? Body xx. Dexterity xx. Mana xx. Spirit xx. I was full of energy as if my body would immediately explode. The sudden change in stats was hard to adapt to. It felt as if my body would fly away by mistake if I put strength into my legs. 
I don't know what had happened, but one thing was certain, this was an opportunity. So I calmly adjusted my condition. Meanwhile, the man approached me with a smile. Haha, it should be over. I stood still, deliberately trying to make a blurred expression. It was better to wait for him to come closer. Not yet. For the best result, I needed the patience to wait for the right moment. All right. Now kiss the back of my hand and swear your loyalty to me. Die you pervert. Swike. Cook. 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 Blood sprayed like a fountain from his neck. But. Shit. It was shallow. He had suddenly made a ridiculous provocation, so I couldn't stand it anymore and swung my sword. Perhaps if he was an ordinary human, but as a result of having killed numerous demons, I knew they were beings who could persistently survive if their necks weren't cleanly cut off. Retreating was the only option now. I hurriedly opened my status window while he was rolling on the ground. Asterisk witch's house. You can't use this skill during battle. Damn it. Wasn't this the end of the battle? I continued to hit the skill. You can't use this skill during battle. You can't use this skill during battle. In the meantime, the man stood up and stared at me as he spoke. Croak, regret, you'll. It seemed he was trying to say something, but honestly, it was hard to understand. And finally, at that moment, moving to Witch's house, bright lights surrounded me as the surrounding landscape changed in an instant. A lobby with an antique interior came into view, and the familiar smell of tea flowing from somewhere. It had only been a few days, but returning here felt as if I had been gone for a very long time. Suddenly, I was overcome with fatigue. Hugh, I don't care what, but, let's take a break first. Since I've taken care of Dr. J. Gal, the survivors shouldn't have a problem. Pa pa pa. Soon, I heard loud footsteps from behind my back. And Elizabeth, who had appeared, shouted in a lively voice. Welcome back. Did you do well on your exam? Are you hungry? Do you want to order pizza? Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. Her pointed ears flapped like wings. Looking at her, I spoke. I'm back. As expected, there was no place like home. Chapter 50. A secret room with only a round table. Holographic emblems could be seen appearing one by one. Heavyweights who would usually only gather at most once or twice a year had gathered again in just a few days. After confirming that all the emblems were present, a woman in a wheelchair spoke. I'm sure you've already heard the news, there's a problem this time. Not long ago, they had made a plan to identify the warrior by using the disaster that was predicted by Oracle. For this reason, the large-scale disaster that was currently taking place at the hero exam in Pyongyang wasn't the problem. Rather, they had anticipated this disaster to happen. After all, this much of a sacrifice was cheap in comparison to identifying the warrior who could affect the fate of the world. But, what happened? Didn't you say the incident would definitely happen in Pyongyang? Yeah, terrorist attacks are happening at some test sites in China. Because of that, my position is very awkward right now. As Oracle had predicted, the demon army had certainly carried out terrorism at the test site. However, the incident wasn't limited to just Pyongyang. Terrorist attacks believed to have been the work of the demon army were happening at the ongoing hero exams around the world. And as a result, the death toll was rising, and as the number reached tens of thousands, the damage could be said to be very severe. However, it wasn't the number of such victims that those who were gathered here now were worried about. Could the Oracle's prediction be wrong? That would be the collapse of their vested interests. The malfunction of Oracle. The woman replied. No, that's not true. Oracle's prophecy was correct again. Just, the interpretation of the prophecy was wrong. The prediction that the demon army would attack the hero exam. They had predicted that an event would occur in Pyongyang after piecing together the facts and fragmented information. However, the disaster had actually occurred on a global scale. The fact that they didn't expect the demon army infiltrating Earth to be on such a scale had caused a mistake in their judgment. It has become difficult. And the most important thing right now was, because of this, the warrior could no longer be identified. The number of people who were active in this disaster were dozens of people. Should they assume all of them were warriors? No, doesn't that mean there are several warriors who can change the oracle's predicted future? That's right. And as you all know, that's absolutely impossible. Hmm, maybe none of them are warriors. If all of these incidents are defined as a single event, then no one has stopped it. It's as if the demons are one step ahead of us. The woman's expression, which had always been cold and stiff, wrinkled. They already knew there was a warrior in this world. The world-class foresight that was thought possible only by themselves. However, if they were to infer from what had happened this time, it was clear that the demons knew not only of the presence of the warrior, but also that they would operate to identify the warrior. That was how such a large-scale smokescreen operation was able to be carried out. Or, there's a traitor inside. What should we do now? We can't just leave it like this? There was silence inside the conference hall. And after a while, the woman spoke. 
it would be best to put the warrior issue on hold for now. More than that, we can't just sit still after the demons had carried out such a massive terrorist attack. We will designate them as the Black Grade, the most wanted enemy of mankind, and issue a wanted order for all beings involved. Hmm, fine. Let's do that for now. And I think we need to deal with the public sentiment from anxious citizens. This will reduce trust in the world government if left unattended. That's obvious, but um, what should we do? We have to turn our eyes on the survivors and those who have died by making them heroes. I see. It's time to lift the carrot rather than the stick. If so, please contact the Hero Association to compensate the candidates. Thus, they continued their meeting on what needed to be done in the future. Soon after, in the secret room where the holograms had disappeared, the woman let out a long sigh. Maybe, the prophecy in 20 years might change too. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Hey, be careful moving the wounded. We're out of blood packs. Ask for more to be transported. Rescue workers were running around frantically on a white snowfield. Samaria had contacted the Hero Association to report the situation at Pyongyang's test site after she had disposed of Dr. J. Gao. As a result, several heroes with space transfer or healing ability were quickly dispatched. And while the injured were being treated, a transport aircraft was flying toward this place to pick up the candidates. Samaria was watching everything with a blank look. How should she express how she felt right now? She felt as if she had been deprived of the food that she had saved for a long time by someone else. If I had tamed Noah a little earlier, late regret flooded in. She felt a heartache when she recalled the boy's face, with a more beautiful appearance than a woman and a lacking personality that resembled her. In addition to that, even the uniqueness of being a warrior, the boy who might have been the best toy in her life had disappeared with the devil. Someone's voice came from behind her back. You were here. Looking back, it was Pamir. His shining armor was plastered with the blood and bodily fluids of monsters. Shaking off a piece of monster flesh, he spoke. All the monsters were taken care of, then at some point, the portal disappeared. I see. What happened here? That's. Samaria thought for a moment about what to say regarding Noah. The scene where he was taken by the devil was only witnessed by her. She didn't want to share this information with anyone. So she said with a moderate mix of truth and false. Choi Noah took care of the corrupted hero who was the supervisor here. But, after that, a portal suddenly opened and a lot of monsters began to pour out. Like the monsters I've dealt with? Yes. While fighting against such monsters, the portal suddenly disappeared as Choi Noah was sucked into it. Hmm, is that so? Could it have been linked to the portal I destroyed? Pamir nodded as if it was a possibility. Unexpectedly, he seemed to have been convinced of her words. Why is this obsessed fanatic so calm? If it was the personality she was familiar with, he would have asked more persistently about Noah. As soon as she thought that, Pamir continued. I roughly understood what happened here. I'd like you to report the details yourself. I have somewhere to be now. Where? I just received a call from headquarters. Terrorist attacks are currently occurring simultaneously in test sites around the world. What? He explained to her what he had just heard from headquarters a moment ago. Oracle's prophecy of the terrorist attack they had thought to be limited to Pyongyang was actually a worldwide attack. As a result, there were currently numerous casualties, and the director at headquarters was busy trying to deal with the situation. I don't think it's going to be easy to conclude that the boy here is a warrior. The number of people who are active in this terrorist disaster is very high. It will take a long time to investigate each one of them. Pamir turned his back, clicking his tongue. I'm a little busy right now, so I'll go first. Oh, and I'll tell the headquarters about your cooperation this time. Maybe you can come back too. I see. All right. At the end of her words, Pamir took out a space transfer artifact and used it. Staring at the place where Pamir had disappeared, she thought to herself. Choi Noah isn't a warrior? No. It couldn't be. She wasn't sure what others thought, but she had witnessed the devil kidnap Noah herself. He wouldn't have done it for no reason. Regardless of what had happened at the other test sites, it was here that the mastermind had appeared in person. On top of that, the portal that was installed here was definitely because they knew we were coming. Wasn't that enough proof that Pyongyang's test site was more important than anywhere else? As expected, Noah is the warrior. That was her conclusion. But, what was the use of that anymore? The devil had already taken him away. Anger began to boil deep within her when she recalled that fact again. Pack. That, or this guy. Why does everyone keep interrupting my interest? All the forces were trying to take away the only interest that comforted her heart. Now even the world was trying to take it away from her. Violent mana swirled around her body but it's too early to give up. The reason was unknown. Just an ambiguous intuition. A strange bond from the moment she first saw him, it told her so. Noah was still alive. She didn't have the ability to read fate or predict the future, but strangely enough, she was convinced. Right. He's not someone who would die so easily. 
Then, what did she have to do? The answer came to mind shortly after. He was of the same kind as her. And, if he was really alive, he'll only think of what benefits him. The sacrifices and dedications she had shown so far had only been seen as her having some kind of intention. Using this as an opportunity, I need to prepare a place for him to come back. She began to plan for the future with the assumption that Noah was still alive. As someone who was more obsessed with him than anyone, she couldn't give up her toy yet. An unprecedented attack on the Hero Association. The whole world was shocked as a result. People who had originally thought the Demon Army to be just a distant terrorist organization now were beginning to recognize them as dangerous beings that could threaten their own lives. For this reason, the Hero Association had pushed ahead with their existing schedules to calm the anxious citizens. And as if everything was fine, they planned to turn the Hero Appointment Ceremony into a big and elaborate event. As such, that also included the Pyongyang Branch. At a three-story auditorium of the Pyongyang Branch, currently in attendance were those who had survived the exam, and the numerous media personnel and citizens. I sincerely congratulate all of you who have passed the exam. You all who will become official heroes after a year of probationary work. However, unlike other branches, one peculiar thing that stood out was that all the candidates in attendance were dressed in black. I will now announce and appoint the successful candidates for the hero exam. Sounds of applause echoed. It was a joyous moment when a new hero was born and when the candidates realized their dreams. But among the candidates, no one smiled. They simply looked at the podium with pained expressions. Citizens who saw their appearances quietly stopped clapping. And in such a cold atmosphere, the appointment ceremony continued. The exam numbers of those who had passed the exam were called, and those who came up took their hero license one by one. Instead of cheering for joy, the candidates who had passed the exam quietly kept their mouths shut as if they had made a pact. The auditorium was engulfed in silence. In such an awkward atmosphere, the branch manager sweated as he spoke. Then, next, the A-rank hero Saint of Samaria will personally award hero licenses to those who have achieved excellent grades. Samaria, wearing a black clergy uniform, took over the microphone from the center of the stage. Unlike usual, her clothes were modest without any exposure. Hero license. Among them, especially in the case of the high-rank exam, they were divided into D-rank and C-rank. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. And for C-rank, there was a tradition that it was to be awarded by the highest-rank hero of the branch. Samaria spoke. Candidates who have performed well in this exam will be called in order. Examinee number 00187, examinee number 004587. Those who were called rose to the podium one by one. The total was five. Gesturing at them, she continued. These candidates who have performed well will be given a C-rank hero license. She shook each person's hand as she handed them their hero license. In the meantime, a woman who had received her license suddenly began to wept. Hook. A woman with colorful hair. It was exam number 04589, Saki. Soon after, she collapsed on the stage and wailed loudly. Wah! I don't deserve this. The real hero isn't me. Suddenly, the ceremony stopped. But no one rebuked her. The feelings of those who were gathered here were the same as her. Sniffling cries could be heard all around the auditorium. Hook. Shit, why is it like this? Every candidate who took the exam at the Pyongyang branch began to recall one person's face. Examinee number 13579. A genius who had scored perfect in all subjects at the young age of only 13. At first, they were just jealous and busy being wary of him, but at some point they began to sincerely follow the young boy. The spirit of sacrifice and outstanding leadership that the boy had showed on the last test. They could still vividly recall him throwing his body and blocking the destructive light. They wouldn't be standing here now if it wasn't for the boy. And thanks to him, despite the disaster, there were more successful candidates that had passed this exam than any other in history. Fuck. I can't accept it. Suddenly, Mousen threw the hero license in his hand on the floor. It was the license that he had wanted for as long as ten years and had wanted to obtain regardless of the means. We haven't seen his body yet. He couldn't have died. All of their last memories were blurry. At some point they had lost consciousness. And Noah's figure was already gone by the time they had opened their eyes. Only through Samaria's testimony, it was inferred the fact that Noah would have died. Perhaps that was why it was even more difficult to accept his death. I have to go look for him again. He could be dying somewhere in the snow. There were voices of sympathy here and there at Mousen's words. In an instant, the interior of the auditorium turned noisy. At that moment. Boom. A violent manna burst from Samaria who stood on the stage. With the aura of an A-rank hero, the interior immediately regained its silence. Then, she calmly spoke. Like all of you, it also pains me. I've been observing him for a long time. Do you all remember the Lake Towns Hotel terrorist incident? Even before Noah became a hero, he didn't spare his body for the citizens. 
Even though he was young, he had a better sense of justice than anyone I know, he was a true hero. Therefore, I was looking forward to the day he became a hero. She quietly continued her words. Her voice penetrated everyone's hearts. In fact, his grades were unprecedented. If only the last test could have been completed safely, it would have been a new record that would remain in the history of the Hero Association. But he, he sacrificed his body to save those here. Yes, he didn't bend his beliefs even until the very end. The candidates recalled Noah's figure. The scene of him blocking the terrifying ray of destruction directly with his body. And those who recalled watching him at home during the hotel incident. The back of a young boy who had saved the citizens. Cook. Damn it. Hyuk, young master. Why did this have to happen? Mausen, who was indignant, sat down and wept. Next to him, his group also sat down and wept. Samaria's voice continued in their ears. Because of that, I had filed a petition with the Hero Association headquarters. There's no hope for the birth of true heroes on this land if we don't recognize these outstanding talents. As a result, the Hero Association had decided to issue him an unprecedented hero license. He is to be given A rank, citing that he had saved numerous lives, achieved new records in all tests, and that the villain he faced this time was a corrupted A rank hero. Perhaps it's meaningless now, but I still wanted to honor his noble spirit this way. She took out a black glossy A rank hero license. Because he was someone who is more than qualified. In response to her words, everyone bowed their heads with a solemn look. Saki, who was crying on the podium, and Mausen, who was crying under the podium. Only one person's face came to mind in everyone's head. For the victims of this incident and the hero Choi Noah who had protected all of us. Let's have a moment of silence. Everyone inside the auditorium bowed their heads. At that moment, a bright voice was suddenly heard that didn't match the solemn atmosphere. Ahok, Who had dared to make such a fuss during this moment of remembrance? The expressions of those who were praying for the loss of Noah turned fierce, and they all immediately looked to one place. Then, there, my reward, Noah, who everyone thought was dead, could be seen entering the auditorium. Asterisk 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 asterisk. I couldn't hide my excitement as I looked at the message window in front of me. Challenge, hero's journey. Condition, obtain a hero license. Time, one year. Reward, varies depending on hero rank. Condition for the challenge, hero's journey has been met. Reward will be given depending on the result. D rank, 1x random box, low. C rank, 1x random box, medium. B rank, 2x random box, medium. A rank, 2x random box, medium, 1x random box, high. Jackpot. Just two medium grade boxes were enough to make me dance, but I couldn't believe I was getting a high grade box too. A smile beamed across my face. I had been at home avoiding the hassle for a while, and was only now able to come get my license after the hassle had ended. In any case, I never could have imagined that it would be A rank. Soon, cheers suddenly erupted around me. Wah! Hmm? Looking around everywhere, the people gathered in the auditorium were rushing at me like a group of fanatics. It looked like I was watching a bunch of zombies. He's alive. Choi Noah is alive. Ha ha ha. Of course. I knew he wouldn't die. I believed him. Young master, I'm sure you were crying a moment ago. People lifted me up as a group. Thanks to this, I climbed to the podium riding the waves as if I was a rock star. A crazy woman holding a microphone was smiling insidiously at me. As expected, this woman gave me an uncomfortable feeling. She smiled insidiously and whispered softly to me. Did you plan this kind of outcome? As expected, you're the same kind as me. What was this woman talking about? I had felt it before, but she was out of her mind. I don't know what you mean. Ho ho, I guess so. We can talk about this slowly next time. First now. She said and handed me the black glossy hero license. A shining letter A could clearly be seen on its surface. Why don't you say something to the people here? What should I say? Hmm, anything is fine. Something like how do you feel about being a hero or what kind of hero you want to be. When I turned my head, the reward I saved was looking at me enthusiastically. HM, what kind of hero did I want to be? Was there such a thing? I had never cared about that before. Well, it would be better to give a simple answer here. After a moment of thought, I received the microphone from Samaria. Then, I looked at the cameras that were shining on me and shouted. Everyone, I'll do my best to be a kind hero who kills bad guys. As a result. Wah! Reputation has increased. Reputation has increased. Reputation has increased. In front of my eyes, messages of my reputation increasing began to rise steadily. And so, unique in this world. I had become an A-rank trainee hero. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Everyone, I'll do my best to be a kind hero who kills bad guys. Kianma Palace, located somewhere in China. After returning home, Eugene was now watching Noah through a broadcast. 
ha ha, as expected, he became a hero. A light smile bloomed across her lips. She felt as if her heart would sink when she had heard news of the terrorist incident. However, her friend was able to safely pass the exam in the end. I guess that kind of disaster was nothing for someone like him. Not only that, Noah had received the A-rank hero license. Except in the early days when the Hero Association was just established, there had been no other people who had received A-rank from the start since then. The highest rank that could be obtained for passing the Hero exam was C-rank. This was by design and was set up by the Hero Association's vested interests for ranks to be raised by accumulating merits. But Noah broke that common sense. He had acquired the A-rank hero license from the start. As to be expected of my best friend. Even though it wasn't her, she smiled as if she had become an A-rank hero. As she watched Noah, suddenly, that day came to mind. At that time, she wasn't aware of it at all because of the circumstances, but looking back on it now, she wanted to crawl into a hole. Her ears became bright red. I was just helping my best friend. Alone in her room, she made an excuse for herself. Then, she gently touched her lips. No way, he won't remember, will he? No. Even if he remembers, it was honorable. I had no ulterior motive. Since that day, whenever she thought of him, strangely, she would feel a shortness of breath and the bandages around her chest would tighten. But she didn't hate such symptoms. And behind those emotions, a sense of shame came. On the subject of friendship, Noah was moving farther and farther away from her. Me too, I can't fall behind. Soon, she picked up an intercom. My baby. Wait a minute. Papa is taking care of his work, you son of a bitch. Cut here, cut here, and cut here too. Okay. No, not there but here. Hugh, it's done. Yes, yes, what's wrong my baby? Did you want to hear Papa's voice, so you called? Eugene cut off her stepfather's words and spoke. Stepfather. The place you mentioned the other day, I want to go inside the Kianma trial space. Tn, Kianma trial space is where the successor to Kianma goes to earn the rights to inherit the title Kianma after completing the trial. With the determination to stand side by side with her friend, she decided to give up everything and entered the Kianma trial space. Asterisk 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 asterisk. A messy office. Kim Taehee sat in front of her desk where documents were piled high like a mountain as she scrolled the wheel on her mouse. Soon, an article caught her eyes. The birth of the world's first A-rank trainee hero? In the article, the very familiar face of a boy appeared. Black hair and purple eyes. A child who hid behind a smile. She could feel his desperate pain. It was Noah. He eventually became a hero. She smiled lightly as she looked at the picture of Noah. Since the Lake Town terrorist incident, she had spent every day praying for the boy to regain his happiness. Fortunately, the prayer was effective, and Noah hadn't gone down the wrong path and had become a splendid and dignified hero. Hugh, I can't nag him anymore even if I meet him. In just a few months, he had become an A-rank hero who was higher than herself. Of course, he was a trainee hero with no experience, but the weight of the A-rank wasn't light either. I want to give him a congratulatory present. Hmm, if I send it out of the blue, he'll feel burdened, right? Since then, she has been waiting to hear from the hotline she had given him, but the child has yet to contact her. She thought the boy would find this kind of goodwill burdensome since he was at a really sensitive age. I, I'll just buy him a meal next time we meet on the field. They will inevitably encounter each often in the future once he becomes a hero. She gave up her desire and sighed. Soon, a voice of her aide was heard from outside her office. Chief Kim, he's here. Shall I send him in now? Ah. Come to think of it, it was today. Not long ago, a new police officer had been assigned to the counterterrorism department where she was working. At first, she thought he had applied without knowing fear, but it turned out that he had a long decorated career and even had a superpower, so she decided to accept it. In addition, he looks quite useful from his eyes in the picture. Different from how she was looking at the monitor screen, Kim Taehee's expression quickly returned to that of a tyrant. Come in. Squeak. A large man entered and shouted loudly. Attention. This is Go Chongsu who was assigned to the counter-terrorism department. I ask for your guidance from now on, huh? And standing there, it wasn't the sharp guy she had seen in the police profile but a bearded man that looked like a bandit. Asterisk 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 asterisk. A single room with no lights, let alone furniture. There was a boy sitting in such a dark room. Pale skin like a corpse, he looked to be 17 years old. It was the one who had participated in the hero exam, examinee number 00187. And on the hero license in front of him, written along the word C-rank, was the boy's name. Fernando. He stared blankly at the license in his hand. And then? Whoosh! A person's shadow could be seen walking out from the darkness. A well-dressed man with a mustache. Captain belonging to the special force of the demon army. It was Azazel. 
however, on his neck, unlike usual, it was wrapped in a thick bandage. What happened? Fernando asked, looking at the bandage. Azazel smiled awkwardly and replied, Haha, something like that happened. Please don't ask for more details. Okay. Fernando nodded calmly. He simply asked because he saw it. In the first place, he wasn't very interested in Azazel's matters. Well, congratulations on passing the exam. Oh, and this is a small gift, but please accept it. Boom. Azazel threw a naked woman in front of Fernando. Hup. Hmm. You should be hungry this time because you've worked hard, so hurry up and eat it. Fernando looked at the woman who had fallen in front of him. The woman was crying with a frightened look on her face. Who is she? She's a Birank hero active in the Sanuaju area. I think you'll be satisfied if you taste it. Her crime? Haha, ha, right. That was more important to you. This woman has illegally operated a gambling house using her status as a Birank hero. Oh, and when I looked at her memories, I found that she had committed murders secretly. Is this enough? Enough. Soon Fernando began to eat the woman alive. Crunch, crunch. The sound of bones breaking resonated in the empty apartment. After eating for a while, Fernando wiped the blood stains off his lips and asked. Hugh, I've become a hero like you wanted. What should I do now? It was a good thing to make you a hero, just in case. Let's see, all right. What you have to do now is, be as close as possible to Choinoa. That's all? Yes. That's right. And, I'll let you know the next plan when the time comes. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. Okay. Azazel's eyes flashed purple as he smiled at Fernando. Chapter 51 The Weekend After the Ceremony A peaceful interior with a lit fireplace. At this golden time when I would normally be enjoying my games and eating pizza, I was reading a booklet I had no desire to. Hugh. I sighed and closed the thick booklet I had been reading. Then, the title printed in a rustic font caught my eyes. Hero Training Institute Guide. That's right. After this weekend, I'll have to enter a place called the Hero Training Institute. As it turned out, just because I passed the hero exam, didn't mean I could work as a hero right away. Obtaining a license was simply a method to check my qualities and abilities to become a hero. I still had to learn how to act as a hero and know the various detailed rules. Therefore, I'll have to live at the training institute in the future and follow the curriculum there. Ha! Huh. According to the booklet I had read a moment ago, life at the Hero Training Institute will last a year. Honestly, I had always wanted to go to school at least once out of curiosity, but thinking about having to live a boring life for a year, I didn't feel very pleased. At least I could find comfort in the fact that the curriculum was thoroughly organized based on my practical skills. Noah, I'll put your notebook and writing utensils in this pocket. Elizabeth was next to me packing on my behalf. A notebook with penguins and sharks drawn on the cover could be seen being put into my bag. While looking at her, I spoke. I don't need either. I can just ask Nuna during the theoretical tests anyway. I had no desire to devote my time to studying useless knowledge. Elizabeth replied with a rather firm tone. That won't do. Class attitude and sincerity are also included in the evaluation at these places, so it would be better to follow everyone else. Hmm. What she had said certainly made sense. This woman probably knew better than me in this field, so I better take it with me for now. Soon, she could be seen packing pajamas with animal ears on them into my bag. These were the clothes she had suddenly given me as a gift the other day. I didn't really want them, so I had left it unattended. Why did she put these in? I don't need pajamas. That won't do. When you go to a place like this, it's standard to wear cute pajamas. Ah, and it's really important to take a proof shot and send it to me. But the booklet I had read earlier didn't mention such a thing? Oh oh, isn't it because it's such a natural rule? Hmm. I watched her with doubtful eyes. Even though I didn't know the norm of a place called school, according to my common sense, did I really need such pajamas? As I observed her, Elizabeth, who was muttering to herself, forced a pillow that was taller than me into my bag. It was a pillow with a print of her in a swimsuit. Don't tell me this is necessary too? Why yes. When you go to a place like this, it's good to bring pictures of your precious people. Puff. The cotton inside the pillow fluttered in all directions. You walk. No. It was almost done. Elizabeth hurriedly picked up the cotton that had fallen on the floor. Just in time, Choi Bok Hui, who was coming down the stairs, saw the scene and clicked her tongue as she walked by. Just wrap it up at this point. If he needs anything, you can just go and give it yourself. Why yes. Okay. Leave it to me. Looking at Elizabeth in the second round, it was really doubtful whether this idiot was the black witch. Still, her abilities were steadily developing, so it was ambiguous to say. Anyway, I have some work to do in my room now, so don't disturb me unless I call you. Oh hee hee okay. I won't disturb you at all. Relax do what you want to do. For some reason, Elizabeth was looking at me with an unpleasant smile. Her expression felt quite uncomfortable, 
but it wasn't just a day or two that she had done something strange, so I ignored her and went up to my room. There were really important matters waiting today. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Entering my room, I immediately opened my status window. Level 51. Body, 5.05. Dexterity, 4.28. Mana, 5.08. Spirit, 5.06. Asterisk zero fragments of growth. My growth was tremendous this time. It was all thanks to the various opportunities during the hero exam. In fact, in terms of level, the stats were similar to me being between level 70 and 80. Anyway, it was time to slowly decide on my career path. Most games had different character development methods depending on the beginning and the second half of the game. In the beginning, you would have high offensive power as you were busy acquiring items and skills, but as your character grew and you progressed to the second half of the content, it could be said that it was advantageous to set a goal and foster your career path. You would only end up as a jack-of-all-trades if you were greedy, and your skill set would be crippled compared to those of the same level. In that sense, it was necessary for me to have a goal in mind. And my ultimate goal was to clear the content called the Demon Invasion. If so, it would be best if my skills synergized. I opened the notebook I had brought with me earlier and briefly summarized the skills I currently had. 1. Passive Skill. Heavenly Body, Sealed, Giant Hunter, Turbax Blessing. 2. Defensive Skill. Divine Shield. 3. Offensive Skill. Inner Heart. 4. Utility Skill. Phase Change, Intermediate, Vampiric Touch, Intermediate, Twin Fire Eggs. 5. Miscellaneous Skill. Gene Awakening, Warrior's Journey. 6. Item Skill. Wolf Hour, Absolute Defense, Dire Wolf, Camouflage, Baby Angel. Hmm. Looking at it like this, it certainly seemed to be a baseless career path. In addition, compared to the skills I had strengthened, there were quite a few skills with low grades. It seemed it would be necessary to gradually adjust the grades and direction of my skills through synthesis from now on. Anyway, there were many unused goods piled up in front of me right now. 3x random box, medium. 1x random box, high. 2x skill selection. Rewards I had received after passing the hero exam and for saving the candidates. In addition, two skill selections for reaching level 45 and 50. This was a good opportunity. The decisions this time should be chosen a little more carefully with regard to future content. After organizing my thoughts, I decided to use the skill selection first. Used level 45 skill selection. One of the following skills can be learned. Hmm. Was it because I didn't gain any achievements when I reached level 45? Unfortunately, there were no notable skills. I made up my mind after looking at the list for a while. At least this should be useful? You've learned the skill Wind Cutter. A simple magic attack skill. As I currently lacked a range attack skill, it could be said to be a passable decision. Hugh, next was the real thing. Unlike level 45, which was just plain, I had gained as many as two achievements for the level 50 skill selection. Skilled Warrior and Doom Slayer. Both achievements were expected to relate to demons. I used the skill selection with anticipation. Used level 50 skill selection. One of the following skills can be learned. I carefully looked through the skill list. And at the bottom of the list, as expected, the special selection was sparkling and waiting for me. A. Avon Strash. Classification, Mortal. Grade, B. Description, Killing Technique, created by the legendary warrior Avon. Gather all the strength in the body to launch a powerful attack. B. Demon Hunter. Classification, General. Grade, B. Description, High Bonus Damage Against Targets with the Demon Attribute. Level 55 Skill Selection will be forfeited if you select a special skill. As expected, there's this. An advantageous skill had come out to deal with demons. It was more useful than I had expected. Unfortunately, I also wanted the skill Avon Strash. It was a waste, but, I had to endure it. It was simply a shortcut to becoming ruined if I bored a career path without a clear goal. The first thing to do now was build towards the final content. I was shaken for a moment, but I quickly set my mind straight. You've learned the skill Demon Hunter. And that was how I had completed both skill selections. Fortunately, thanks to the useful Demon Hunter skill, it could be said that it was now easier to devise a career path. General attack skills would also be adjusted to some extent to cause fatal injuries on demons from now on. Should I say it was a good start? I moved on to the next step with a satisfied smile. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Hugh, gotcha's time is back. My heart would always beat fast and I would always feel nervous before doing gotcha. But that wasn't the case today because I had reassurance. Hee hee, no matter how unlucky I was, I was bound to get at least one decent thing today. Today's gotcha spree was as many as three medium-grade and one high-grade boxes. 
If I didn't get anything today, I could only chalk it up as an administrator's prank. I opened one of the boxes with a light heart. Come on, let's go. Used 1x random box, medium. The box rotated in the air and began to emit a blue light. Good. The blue light effect that I liked. For now, it was confirmed that a degrade or higher will come out. There were many chances, but it was better to be lucky right from the start. And soon a message appeared in front of me. Obtained the skill bondage. Bondage? I tilted my head at the unfamiliar name that I couldn't even begin to guess the meaning. Bondage. Classification, magic. Grade, C. Description, summon a strong rope to completely bind the target. First class bondage technique created by a master with a secret hobby. Oh. Reading the skill description, I exclaimed. There was no downside to having a crowd control skill. And it was C grade. Even if it wasn't, I was lacking a CC skill. The perfect skill had come out. Hmm? As soon as I was ecstatic, I then noticed another phrase marked a little further down. Asterisk the target will be released from the bind if the target speaks of the agreed password or sincerely wants to escape. WH what was this? It was hard to understand. No way, did that mean the person who wants to be released could release it themselves? I tried to understand it by reading the description again and again. But the more I read, the less likely there were any other possibilities. And no, there couldn't be such a skill in the world? I contacted Elizabeth to experiment. A shadow formed on the floor, and she appeared in an instant. Noah, why did you call me all of a sudden? Kayak. I immediately used the bondage skill. Then, a red rope was created in the air and it bound her body. Was it because the magic was made by a sorcerer supreme? The way the rope was tied was also unusual. As if looking at a magic device, her body was bound in a geometric pattern. Elizabeth hung in the air with her back bent like a bow. It was a perfect bind where she couldn't move her body at all. I continued to observe the situation. Hmm, it seemed like a perfect skill up to here. However, the explanation of the skill I had read a moment ago was bothering me. Could the bound target be released if the target really wanted it? As I thought about it, suddenly, Elizabeth shouted. Ah, no, D don't do this, Noah. I know you're a growing boy, but, this is wrong. Hang in there for a second. There's something I want to try. More than that, Nina. Try to release it. Kohook, I can't untie it. I'm tied up. I can't get out of here. Oh, you really can't move? Ah, I'm really tied up now. I'm really, really defenseless no matter what you do here, I can't resist at all. Was there an error in the description of the skill? Elizabeth seemed to have simply become unable to move a finger. But just in case, let's experiment one last time. Maybe it was related to the sincerely part written in the description. Nina, if you can release it, do you want to go to the cafe you mentioned? Whoosh. Really? When should we go? Elizabeth had released the bondage even before I could finish my words. And she was now planning the schedule while looking at a calendar as if nothing had happened. Can you leave the room now? Huh? What about the cafe? Just go away. Elizabeth, who couldn't abandon her idiotic thoughts, was pushed away as I closed the door. This was a trash skill. So much for a binding skill. I didn't know why such a skill was even C-grade. Hugh. I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. Still, I had high hopes after seeing the blue light, but it had ended like this. However, it was the first opening, so it was okay. I opened the next box. Used 1x random box, medium. This time, I purposely turned my eyes until the result came out. Otherwise, I might be disappointed like earlier if I had high expectations. Please, just one hit. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. Soon, I slowly opened my eyes and checked the result. And unknowingly, I clapped my hands and cheered. Oh. Obtained the skill Spider Silk. Spider Silk. Classification, Ability. Grade, C. Description, creates a powerful web that is difficult to observe with the naked eye. That was more like it. At a first glance, I could see that a very useful skill had come out just by reading the description. It was good for use as a crowd control to bind and trap, and it also had good utility. Maybe I could use this skill for mobility, just like the main character from the popular Spider-Man movies. This was a perfect skill for heroes. Reaching straight for the wall, I activated the skill. Pa, pa, oh, hmm, where did it go? Obviously, there was a sound of spider webs firing, but I couldn't see it at all. Was it because it was difficult to observe with the naked eye? I got a little closer and used the skill again. Pa, 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 hmm? Still, there was no change on the wall. But, more than that, I had begun to feel somewhat strange since earlier. Why did my pants feel so uncomfortable? I sneaked my hand down the back of my pants. Then, I saw a bunch of sticky webs on my fingertips. I stared blankly at the webs for a while. Ho ho. I couldn't help but laugh as I kept staring at it. Yeah, the skill of spider webs coming out of my butt. It may be useful somewhere. When the enemy is off guard and I attack with my butt, 
or when I'm sitting on a dirty floor and don't need a cushion. Fyok. That can't be. I collapsed on the floor and cursed. This was bad no matter how I stretched it. How did I get two trash skills in a row? Rather, the bondage skill a while ago could interfere with the target's movements even for a moment, but what on earth was this used for? I opened the synthesis window without hesitation. Originally, I was going to synthesize cleverly as needed, but I couldn't stand this insult. Do you wish to synthesize bondage and spider silk? The original materials cannot be reverted once synthesized. Synthesize. Whatever the result was, I thought it would be better than these wastes now. And Materials used in synthesis have a synergy effect. The skill's potential has increased. Synthesis completed. Marionette. Classification, ability. Grade, B. Description, can restrict the target's actions by connecting invisible threads. Affected by willpower and mana. Yes, this is it. I knew this would happen. My gambling had hit the mark. As expected, the spirit of Gotcha was to not give up until something good comes out. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. This god game is all about luck. Just like that, my new career path setup was unfolding little by little. Chapter 52. What's this troubling feeling? I was drying myself and changing my pants after coming out of the bath. But for some reason, I had been feeling very uncomfortable as if there was still a sticky feeling on my butt. At least I had gotten a skill out of this. The experience from earlier was very unpleasant, but nevertheless, I had gotten a B-grade skill by combining two garbage skills, so it could be said that I had made a profit. HM, should I continue? It was important to keep going when you were on a streak when it comes to gotcha. Unfortunately, a lot of time was delayed because I had to wash the damn spider webs off. I looked at the remaining goods. 1x random box, medium. 1x random box, high. Just one more good thing to come out would be great. Wasn't there a saying that when you're enjoying something you would want to enjoy it even more? The human heart was very sly. Until a moment ago, I was just happy that I had gotten a B-grade skill, but I was getting greedy again now that I was about to open another box. Well, let's go one more time. Used 1x random box, medium. The box spun in the air as it spewed out bright lights. This was the third time I was seeing this sight today. Such moments were still nerve-wracking even though I was used to it. Soon, in the place where the lights had disappeared, a cute puppy doll appeared. Hmm? A doll out of the blue, at a first glance, there was a feeling that it was a failure. Suddenly, the puppy doll who had been still, turned to me and began barking like crazy. Growl. Bark. Bark. Woof. 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 Growl. Woof. Woof. Annoying racket enough to make you frustrated. It repeated the same thing as if it was a broken doll. As expected, it was another failure. I frowned and checked the item information. Villain barking dog. Classification. Toy. Grade. B. Description, self-defense automatic doll made to protect the successor of a certain noble. It barks or attacks when it sees a villain or criminal. Inflicts additional damage to the fiercely hostile evil tendency. Asterisk in the case of criminals, information is transmitted by inquiring from the national database. What looked like a trivial item was actually a B-grade item. How the hell was this B-grade? And seeing that the doll was barking at me, it was obviously broken. But contrary to what I thought was a failure, I really liked the option on the item. This was surprisingly good? Even if it was broken, I was setting up a career path to deal with the demons, so I couldn't believe I had gotten such a perfect synthesis material. Hee <laughs> hee, perfect. There was a slot left on my sword. I threw the noisy barker into the synthesis window, and then I added red velvet curse. Materials used in synthesis have a synergy effect. Options will be upgraded according to the item grade. Huh? A strange sentence had come to mind. Soon, along with a bright light, the new red velvet curse with the updated option was displayed in front of me. Evil instant death, red velvet curse. Classification, sword. Grade, A. Description, a sharp sword that emits an eerie cry and is sharp enough to put even its owner in danger. Asterisk indestructible. Asterisk the more blood it soaks up, the more demonic energy is emitted from the sword. Effect, sharpness increases. Asterisk wolf hour, accelerates thinking and improves dexterity, 3 thirds, 24 hours recharge cycle. Asterisk absolute defense, nullify any attack once, 1 slash 1, 1 week recharge cycle. Asterisk evil instant death, detects surrounding villains and inflicts additional damage against targets with evil tendencies. Permanently increase the additional damage the more villains are killed, new. Uh -huh. I had no choice but to exclaim when I saw the option. Frankly speaking, it was more than I had expected. No, it wasn't enough to simply describe it as more than expected. Wasn't this option made specifically for me who will be a hero? Additional damage against targets with evil tendency, and it could grow the more villains are killed. In addition, it had the function of detecting villains. Haha, <laughs> it's truly amazing. 
Really, it seemed there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Wasn't the two trash skills earlier just a build up for this moment? The newly changed red velvet curse was releasing a more sharp energy than before. Looking at the sword, I had a realization. As expected, it was a good day. Everything was going smoothly as if everything had been prepared for me. I had a good feeling I was going to hit the jackpot today. Thus, I must end it properly when such momentum comes. Let's continue. I put my hand on the last box, recalling the feeling I just had opening the previous box. Used 1x random box, hi. Then, the box that floated in the air began to spin and sprinkle a brilliant golden glow. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Dawn when everyone was asleep. Light from a monitor sparkled in a dim room. And in front of such a monitor sat someone covered in a hood. Clack. Clack. The sound of tapping a keyboard resonated in the room, followed by a line of words on the monitor. What's the current progress of the plan? Shortly after, an answer came back. Don't worry. Everything is going smoothly, President. There can be no setbacks in the mission. Of course. For this mission, I've mobilized my family's funds to purchase the highest level of equipment. Other members are also fully familiar with how to use it. All right. If you successfully carry out this mission, I'll raise your grade according to your achievements. Leave it to me, President. I'll make sure the mission succeeds. Oh, and please collect not only photos but also videos thoroughly. These days, videos are rather helpful in promotion. I understand. I'll keep that in mind as I proceed with the plan. I'll get back to you soon. Noah Samchin has left. Tn, Samchin means a middle-aged male fan. Wishing for a better future with Noah has left. The chat window closed. Then Elizabeth, who was looking at the screen, smiled insidiously. Her long ears rose in high spirits. Hee <laughs> hee, good, good. She felt very depressed when she had found out that she would be spending a year apart from Noah. But she had finally found a solution in her own way. I'm glad I made a fan club. She looked at the fan club she had started. A daughter. K, Choi Noah's official fan club. The proud name of the fan club that was decided through a fan contest. In fact, in addition to A. K, there were many great ideas such as Noah Yolo and No Underwear, but the decision had been made through the voting of the most popular name. Anyway, it sounds better the more I see it. Noah, the savior in the Bible and the hero Choi Noah who saves citizens. She thought the imagery was simply perfect. On top of that, the growth is going well too. Noah's popularity was spreading nationwide due to the recent disclosure of his test results. The current number of fans had exceeded 30,000. It was an unrealistic number for someone who had just become a hero. And among the members who had joined time, some will also be attending the Hero Training Institute. Elizabeth had contacted them and made plans, so now there was a path to periodically receive updates on Noah. A hero was a person who grew by receiving the public's interest and love. Individual strength was important, but the size of those who supported and cheered for them could be said to be the real influence of a hero. I need to keep adding bait so that interest doesn't die down. Wouldn't it be a small privilege of the fan club president to satisfy a little of her own selfishness in the process? Elizabeth snickered to herself in the empty room. Hee hee, I'm looking forward to the future. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Are you sure you don't want me to come? Elizabeth looked at me with a regretful look on her face. It was just seeing me off. I wasn't going to leave the house forever. Her actions were very exaggerated. It won't be necessary. Give me my bags. MHM, here you go. I grabbed the big suitcases from her. There were three suitcases, all with space expansion spells. What on earth did she pack that there was so much luggage? Anyway, these were practically meaningless to me, as I could go back and forth with the effect of road of a warrior if I wanted to. I hope you didn't put anything weird in there. And no. As you said. I only packed what you really needed. Hmm. Somehow, her answer wasn't very clear. If she has something up her sleeve, I'll have to educate her properly later. Hmm? Elizabeth was wearing a badge that I had never seen before. There was a shape that looked like a ship, and in the middle were small letters etched. A daughter dot K. What was the meaning of this? I couldn't help but notice since she usually didn't wear such accessories. Nuna, what's that? Haha, <laughs> isn't it pretty? For some reason, she raised her chin and gave a proud look. Was it an item? I got a little closer and touched the badge. But no information came to mind. It was trash. If you're interested, should I give you one? I can get Noah a special one. No, no need. I would have asked for it right away if it was an item, but a badge with no option meant nothing to me. Choi Bok Wee, who was standing beside Elizabeth, spoke. Take care and have a safe trip. And please don't cause any trouble there. Why would I cause trouble? I'll be right back after being as quiet as always. Okay. Choi Bok Wee sighed deeply. Was it because she had been spending a lot of time with Elizabeth these days? 
This woman seemed to have a serious misunderstanding of me. After the second round, how reliable have I been living until now? It was really unfair. Hyuk, Noah, before you go, give sister a farewell hug. I'll be back. Ignoring Elizabeth who was talking nonsense with her arms open, I used road of a warrior. Then, with a bright light, the surrounding landscape changed in an instant. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. I could see the building of the Pyongyang branch that resembled a pyramid. And in front of it, there were the candidates who had passed the exam. Ah, Noah. At someone's word, everyone turned their heads. Soon, they flocked to me with bright smiles. How have you been? As for me, I told you to stop by my family, but you didn't even call me once. I'm disappointed. Ha ha. Noah, how do you like sister's dress? Isn't it pretty? They were frantically talking over one another. I pushed them aside. Hmm? There were some familiar-looking badges on their collars. It looked exactly like the one Elizabeth had worn? Although the colors were different, they clearly had the same shape and letters engraved. A daughter dot K. What the hell was this? Was it an accessory that was popular these days? As I was deep in thought, Mousen and Saki approached me. The same badges were attached to their collars, but the color was different from the others. Choi Noah, you're finally here. Hee <laughs> hee. Noah, I missed you. Welcome. Well, I suppose it was an ordinary badge with no abilities anyway. I didn't have to worry about it. After joining up with the successful candidates of the Pyongyang branch, I headed to the portal that would lead to the Hero Training Institute. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Hero Training Institute. It was a large-scale training facility in Goyang city of Jiangidu where heroes who had passed the exam from all over the country gathered each year. The number of those who had passed this time was around 400. Considering that the average number of successful applicants in the past was close to 1,000, it was easy to guess how difficult the level of the hero exam was this time. However, even for those who had passed such a difficult exam, the rankings were bound to be divisive again. The young boy who had come first in a landslide and had set an unprecedented perfect score in the history of the hero exam. Noah, as the representative this time, climbed onto the podium and read the pledge. As I have been appointed as a trainee at the Hero Training Institute, I will keep in mind that my duty is to develop my character and ability as a great hero. The beautiful voice of a young child spread through the training ground. Reporter's camera flashes exploding from all sides, and even broadcasting station's vehicles, which were rarely present for such an occasion, could be seen. I solemnly swear to abide by the law, to be sincere in my efforts to uphold it, and to keep my honor and dignity as a trainee. After finishing the pledge, Noah went down the platform with light steps as the sword hanging from his waist shook. And, there was a girl who was glaring at him. Her name was Shirawi. At the age of 15, she had obtained the C-rank hero license and was the nation's second best for the hero exam this time. It should have been me up there. She glared at Noah with a venomous look. White sweatpants and sneakers. Was he not aware of how important this was? Even if he didn't want to dress up like her, shouldn't he at least wear formal attire? I can't believe I lost to such a child. If not for Noah, she would have been the youngest person to win the country's top title this time. If only, then my father might have attended. She recalled her father who was likely busy somewhere. Shin Chanho. He was one of the only two S-rank heroes in Korea. Even her father, who was always busy with various schedules, might have visited if she had been first in the country. While she was thinking about this and that, the appointment ceremony finally ended. The trainee appointment ceremony will now come to an end. You'll be guided to your accommodation as soon as it's ready, so you can act freely in the training ground until then. The trainees rushed to their families and friends to say goodbye. Such a harmonious scene made Shirawi even more depressed. Soon, she heard a loud voice from behind her back. Haha, you're alone again today. But don't be too disheartened. Loneliness is an important foundation for inner growth. With a frown, she looked back at the familiar voice. And standing there was a man in his early twenties with vigorous eyes. His name was Yom Gang Jun. He was the child of the hero family, Taegu, and even though they were six years apart in age, they have known each other since young because of their family's ties. Gang Jun, aren't you also alone? Ha ha ha. Heroes are naturally lonely beings. I'm not ashamed of being alone at all. Ha. She sighed as she looked at Yom Gang Jun who was unnecessarily energetic. I don't want to involve myself with this person any longer. Gang Jun had rescued another candidate in last year's exam, thus causing him to fail. As a result, that had led him to passing the exam this year alongside her. It's not right to sigh like that. A hero is someone who always has to give citizens a peace of mind. Now, follow me and smile like this. Ha ha ha. Ha. Looking at Yom Gang Jun, who had become impassioned by himself again, she sighed again. Then, at that moment, she noticed a boy at the end of her gaze. The perfect scorer and someone who had taken her place today. 
Was his name Choi Noah? Noah, who had finished his interviews with the reporters, was walking around the training ground alone. She also saw a portable game console in his hands. H. He came all the way here to play games? She had been defeated by such a crazy fellow? It was really hard to understand. A person must show the appropriate behavior if they have taken the top position. After looking at Noah for a while, she walked towards him with a determined look. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Please tell us how you feel about being the country's number one. I'm from MK Daily. Since the last terrorist incident, this time again. After the pledge was completed, reporters who had waited flocked to me. At first I thought I would just ignore it, but then they threw a bait that I couldn't ignore. Reputation has increased. Reputation has increased. Haha, ha, gaining reputation without even doing anything? The reputation number, which had been stagnant for a while, began to increase. I tried my best to answer the reporters' questions as soon as I saw that. I couldn't believe it was such easy work. From now on, I thought it would be best to accept these interview requests as much as possible. After the interviews, I was finally able to regain my freedom as I took out my game console. Fortunately, several fairly good games had been released around this time, so there will be no shortage of fun for a while. It was fun to play these classic games. Suddenly, I heard someone's voice. Can I talk to you for a second? Hmm? When I turned my head, I saw a girl who looked to be about 15 to 16 years old standing with a stiff posture. My name is Shirawi. Oh, okay. I said I'm Shirawi. What did she want from me? I got it, so you can go somewhere else. I don't like to be disturbed when I'm playing games. I continued my game after a moderate wave of my hand at her. Then, she shouted at me with a flushed voice. You really don't know me? Or are you pretending not to know? I've been in a lot of commercials. Don't you have a TV at home? I don't really watch TV. Then, don't you know the S-rank hero, Lightning Sword? My father's name is Shin Chanho. You really don't know? Tn, Lightning Sword is a reference to a legendary sword in Murum. Hmm? I finally looked up. Hearing the name Lightning Sword reminded me of one very old memory. Villain, you, why are you wasting away your power? There was an old man who could shoot off fairly itchy electricity. A real old man who nagged even when his waist was cut in half. Ah, haha, do you recognize me now? I know who you are. When I thought of the old man, I naturally knew who this girl was. The S-rank hero who was called Lightning Calamity. Tn, Lightning Calamity is a reference to a mythical land with non-stop thunderstorms in Murum. It was a girl who came after me, saying that she would avenge her father, but was ultimately split in half and died. This girl was here? I was somehow delighted by the sudden connection of the past. My hands had felt quite good when I had cut this girl at the time. Now that you understand the picture, let's talk for a second. As she was talking, I heard another person's voice nearby. Choi Noah, it's really nice to meet you like this. I'm your fan. Can I shake your hand? When I looked back, a man in his late twenties was looking at me with a bright smile. W.H. Watt. Can't you see we're talking? Shirawi, who was standing next to me, became annoyed, but the man kindly smiled and continued his words. Ha ha, oh my. I was so happy to see you. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Myung Yujin and I'm from Incheon. The man reached out his hand to me with a look of pure goodwill. And at that moment, you've encountered a villain. Evil instant death activated. Red velvet curse, which was worn around my waist, began to vibrate. Chapter 53 Myung Yugon was born in Kowloon Wald District, Hong Kong's largest slum. Shanties all clustered together like matchboxes and rancid filth littered the streets. A place where criminals left out of society gathered, it could be said to be a place like a human garbage dump. For this reason, there was no such thing as a dream for the children who were born here. Men were gang members while women were prostitutes. And for those who couldn't do either, they were inevitably reduced to a cold corpse on the streets. As such, children living here had no sense of purpose and lived day to day simply going with the flow. However, Myung Yugon was different. In a place like Kowloon Wall District where there was no hope or dream, he had a different ambition than others. Every night, while looking up at the tall buildings in the city, he would vow to himself to one day stand up there and look down at the people. And, fortunately, he had the ability to aspire for such an ambition. The name of his ability was Parasite. It was an ability that allowed him to produce parasites in the palms of his hands and turn an infected host into his faithful slave. Thanks to this ability, he was able to escape the shadow of the Kowloon Wald District and join the International Crime Syndicate, Eighth Layer Hell. He had jumped on the dangerous opportunity to establish a name for himself without hesitation, and had been on the rise for over a decade ever since. And now, to carry out one of the missions set by the organization, Myung Yugon had become a hero. The organization, which had begun to expand its power in earnest, envisioned a project to plant spies inside the Hero Association. 
In particular, if he used his parasite ability, he could easily recruit several heroes. If I can complete this mission, perhaps I'll be able to get a job as an executive. The process of becoming a hero was harder than he had thought, but he was able to get here after a lot of hard work. And now that he had come this far, it could be said that the hard part was over. Starting now, all he had to do was infect as many people as possible with his parasites. He looked at the first victim of the plan. It was the rare genius who was being talked about nonstop in the media. Choi Noah. His position in the organization would certainly rise if he could manipulate Noah. He already knew from various articles how capable he was. But that didn't matter. No matter how much of a genius he was, it was as good as done once he becomes infected with the parasites. The narcotic ingredients produced by his parasites will gradually become more addictive to the host, and eventually, the host will become corrupted to the point where they won't hesitate to kill even their own parents. Also, in case of an emergency, he could also use the parasites to take away the host's life. It's over as long as it penetrates his body. He was confident of infecting Noah. Hadn't he already infected even retired A-rank heroes? No matter how powerful a person was, they couldn't always be on guard. And Noah was still an immature child, so he thought it wouldn't be too difficult to infect him with the parasites. If I give him a little praise, I'm sure he'll be full of himself and shake my hand. Myung Yugon approached Noah with a friendly smile. Choi Noah, it's really nice to meet you like this. I'm your fan. Can I shake your hand? For some reason, Noah just stared at him. It seemed he still wasn't used to such celebrity treatment. With a more friendly look on his face, Myung Yugon continued. Haha, <laughs> oh my, I was so happy to see you. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Myung Yugon from Incheon. He reached out his hand to Noah. On the surface, it was just a normal handshake. But now, in his palm, there were parasites he had hidden secretly in advance. Noah looked at his hand for a moment before reaching out his hand. Haha, <laughs> caught you. Parasites waiting under the palm of his hand stuck out through the skin. And at that moment. Swike. Pack. Before he knew it, there was a drawn sword in Noah's other hand. Ha! Huh. At the end of his gaze was Noah, who was observing his hand that had been cut off. Myung Yugon stared blankly at the sight. It was difficult to understand the situation. Bugs? An instant passed. One step later, terrible pain began to pour in. Quiak! And my hand! Myung Yugon cried out, grabbing his own wrist that had been cut off. The hand that had brought him here today had been cut so vainly. He glared at Noah with bloodshot eyes. Cook cook! S son of a bitch, how dare you! I'll kill you! Myung Yugan no longer cared about the plan. He had to contact the organization right away, and only when Noah was killed would he be satisfied. But, swike, he could no longer carry on his thoughts. Ha, huh, the world spun. A pool of blood on the ground quickly drew near him and the little boy suddenly looked as tall as a giant. And next to it was his body, which was staggering with its head cut off. And no, how can it end like this? But the world in his eyes was getting dimmer and dimmer. And thus, his ambition, which he had carried with him for more than 30 years, had ended in an unexpected place. Asterisk 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 asterisk. PSH. Blood sprayed out of a cut neck like a fountain. A man's torso fell and Shirawi's whole body became covered in blood. The blood that had just come out of the human body was hotter than she could have imagined. From the blood that touched the cold air, white evaporation rose. Shirawi touched her cheek with her trembling hand. The palm of her hand became covered in a vivid red as if it had touched paint. Ah, uh, ah, uh, she couldn't help but to stutter. The body of the man whose head was cut off fell in front of her. It was the very same man who was smiling and chatting here just a second ago. Gurg, gurg. Whether or not the man's heart was still beating, blood was still spurting out from the cut neck. The sight was clearly imprinted in her mind as if it was in slow motion. Even if she had wanted to turn her head, her eyes were fixed as if she was possessed by something. She could even see the cross section of the cut neck. Multiple blood vessels and vertebrae embedded in a cross shape, and a hollow hole in the middle. Gurg! Gurg! The moment she saw it, an uncontrollable feeling of wanting to vomit overcame her. Yuck! She poured out all the contents in her stomach on the spot. Between the gradually spreading pool of blood, pieces of cereal she had eaten this morning became mixed in. What should have been a normal day had turned into an extraordinary encounter. Th this, what the hell? She couldn't think straight. Everything in front of her right now felt like a scene from a movie. Nothing that she had studied in the theoretical exam came to mind. Could she still save the man if she applied first aid now? What was she supposed to do with a person whose neck was cut off like this? After a brief moment of countless thoughts, at last, her mind finally understood the current situation. I I am, dead. Thump, thump, thump. Her heart began to beat like crazy. She had been prepared to see a dead body someday. 
everyone who deals with villains were bound to encounter murders and the equivalent terrible scene on a daily basis, and from the moment she had decided to become a hero, she knew to some extent that such a situation would come, but she never could have imagined that day would be today. Furthermore, this was the Hero Training Institute. What kind of crazy person would kill in a place like this? The sudden development left her unable to think properly. She could hear screams all around as her vision blurred. Meanwhile, her gaze met the decapitated head on the ground. She felt as if she would vomit again. You whack. However, only bluish gastric juice poured out as if there was nothing else left. Ha, ha. Her breathing became ragged. She wanted to get out of here quickly, but her legs felt weak and she couldn't move. As she stared at the ground, soon, Noah's sneakers came into view. Slowly raising her head, she found Noah looking at her. Didn't you say you had something to tell me earlier? Swike. Noah casually shook off the blood on his sword. Bright red blood scattered over the sand of the training ground. His expression wasn't much different from before. A bright expression. A look with no traces of tension. His manner was too calm, as if he had taken care of a natural matter. Maybe she was the weird one? For a moment, she felt as if her common sense was wrong. Why aren't you saying anything when you called me first? Th 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 that. Noah came a step closer. She unconsciously took two steps back. Thump, thump, thump. She was terrified of the blade Noah was holding in his hand. She felt as if her neck would fall to the ground at any moment now. None of the skills that were taught by her father came to mind. It had simply turned blank. What's the matter? Are you all right? Noah drew nearer. Then, at that moment, her legs became weak and she collapsed. Ache. And no. Help. It was my fault. Hmm? Shirawi burst into tears. These were the first tears she had shed since the age of seven when her mother had died. However, it was impossible to make a rational decision. And in that instant, Rawi, Yom Gongjuan's voice came from behind her back. Shirawi looked at Noah's expression. He still had his sword drawn. An enormous flame in the shape of a dragon flew toward Noah. Boom! Yom Gangjun, who had charged with his whole body engulfed in fire, was hopelessly blocked in front of a giant shield created by Noah. Cook, I won't give up. With his hands on fire, he continued to strike the shield. Boom, boom, excuse me. I think you're misunderstanding something. Don't lie, villain. Hurry up and release Rawi. Why don't you believe me? I don't compromise with villains. Take this. Hugh, I can't stay like this forever, but I can't kill him either. Noah sighed briefly before turning his head to look at Shirawi. Soon, he stretched out one hand and waved it in the air. Shirawi, who was absent-minded, felt as if someone was grabbing at her body. Soon, her body began to move against her will. Wh what's this? And no. Her body moved in front of the thick shield. Beyond that, Yom Gang Jun, who was violently emitting flames from his mouth, could be seen. Nina, I think this happened because of you, so please solve it for me. I can't just keep defending myself like this. Wh what are you? At the end of Noah's words, the shield that had been preventing Yom Gang Jun's attacks disappeared. Then, a hot flame flew toward Shirawi. And Yom Gang Jun, who saw this, hurriedly tried to recover the flame. Rawi! Cook! Was it because the ability was forcefully cancelled? An explosion occurred in Yom Gang Jun's mouth and he fell to the ground. Black blood leaked out from the corner of his mouth. The white suit he hadn't worn in a long time was stained with bright red blood. Ah, Gang Jun Oroboni. Tian, Oroboni can be what a female refers to an older male who is close to them. Ah, Nina saw that right? I really didn't do anything. Don't try to change the story later, okay? But it seems that misunderstandings are piling up. Noah said as he approached Shirawi. D don't come. The feeling of being controlled earlier had disappeared, but somehow she couldn't move a step. Pa, pa. If he swings his sword like this, she'll die. She recalled the body of the man who had fallen to the ground a while ago. There was no doubt that her head would roll across the ground too. And no. In the end, Shirawi, who couldn't overcome the pressure, fainted on the spot. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Dako Hakju was a career-oriented person. However, his current position as the director of the Hero Training Institute held no real power. At one point, he was aiming for the chief position at Korea's Hero Association headquarters, but he was pushed out of the power game and was then assigned to the position called director at the Hero Training Institute. Why do I have to look after the trainees in this place? For him, who had the reputation of an A-rank hero and was a six-circle mage, he had no choice but to be dissatisfied with his current treatment. The word often on his mind these days was persevere. Each morning when he woke up, he would vow to himself. That one day, he would return to the fierce political arena called the Hero Association. To do so, it was important to continue the number of accident-free days here for now. Well, there's no way there would be an accident at a training institute like this anyway. As he thought as such, suddenly, he heard people screaming. Kayak. 
and murder. W.H. what? Murder? Doc Ohokju doubted his ears. Who in the world would commit murder at this gathering of trainee heroes? He immediately turned to the direction he had heard the screams. And there, he saw the boy who had read the pledge earlier with a sword now in his hand. And, there was also a decapitated head next to him. W.H. what's this? The word no accident flashed through his mind. He was shocked, but his body was already using magic and preparing for the next action. Blink. His body moved to the scene in an instant. There were already other professors besieging and shouting at the boy. Now, release the hostage. If you don't surrender, I'll shoot. Next to the boy, a girl hung limp in the air. He then noticed the girl's familiar face after taking a closer look. It was the girl who had achieved second place in the hero exam and was the only daughter of Lightning Sword. Shit. With the plan to return to the Hero Association one day, he was going to use this opportunity to build a network with Shirawi, so the present situation could be said to be delicate. No, it's really a misunderstanding. Then, release the hostage first and drop your weapon. Noah used the girl like a shield and swung her in the direction of the attacks. Cook. Why you coward. And whenever that happened, the professors would be forced to suffer as they stopped their attacks. Such a sight made Dako Hokju's hair stand on ends. His dream would be as good as finished if that girl was hurt by mistake. Dako Hokju, who had judged that it would be dangerous if he continued to watch the situation, shouted loudly. Everyone stop your attacks. B but. Didn't you hear me? I said stop. The professors backed down with reluctance. What should I do with this? It seemed the situation would be resolved only if he intervened directly. He stood in front of Noah as his robe fluttered. Noah, the boy who had achieved a new record in all subjects and passed the hero exam by an overwhelming margin. However, Dako Hakju was actually one of the people who doubted the boy's performance. The Pyongyang branch must have pulled something. Since he knew this political game better than anyone else, he had already noticed the various tricks related to Noah. In short, he was a hero the Hero Association had manufactured. But why did such a fellow do this? Dako Hakju couldn't understand Noah's intentions at all. Was he a villain who had infiltrated the Hero Association? He couldn't believe such an incident had happened while he was the director. He was so annoyed that he couldn't help but curse inside. Suddenly, he had an idea. No, it's an opportunity. For him who was stuck in such a quiet place he finally had a chance to make a contribution. What if he beat the boy himself and reported it to headquarters? Dako Hakju, the man who saved the daughter of an S-rank hero. He looked around. Reporters were constantly pressing their camera shutters to capture the crisis. Several hero families who were visiting the ceremony could also be seen. A picture was drawn. He stepped forward one step at a time. How dare you cause trouble here? Right. You're a villain who has infiltrated the Hero Association. What? I've been telling you. The guy I killed a while ago was a villain. He attacked me first. How dare you lie? Dozens of magical blades emerged around Dako Hakju. The blades of mana vibrated finely, creating a sound similar to a swarm of bees. It was a magic unique to Dako Hakju and one which had earned him the nickname Blade Mage. You don't need arms or legs to be interrogated anyway. Don't ask me for mercy. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. But at that very moment, dozens of trainees suddenly blocked him and began to cover Noah. At a first glance, the number was close to 80. Frowning at the sight, Dako Hakju asked. Now, what are you all doing? Stop bullying Noah. Baldi! Shouted a woman with colorful hair. WH what did you say? From the way she talked like a toddler, she didn't seem to be a woman in her right mind. If you touch him, everyone here will die today. Oh, my. Dako Hakju laughed in vain. Where was this trainee hero getting her confidence from to threaten him? That was what he had thought. However, he began to feel an unusual energy from the woman's body. The others didn't seem to notice, but he did. As she had said, the moment such an energy explodes, most of the people here will disappear without a trace. Th the hell. But that wasn't the end of what confused him. You can't touch Choinoa, director. A guy in his mid-thirties said proudly in front of him. If you all don't get out of my way, I'll take it as collusion and attack accordingly. Go ahead. Feel free if you're going to do it. The man took off his shirt with a big smile and sat on the ground as if he was really prepared to die. Then, the man looked at him with an insidious smile. Oh, by the way, my father is Deiros Mewa. I'm sure you've heard that he's the chief superintendent general. And that friend over there is the son of the deputy mayor of Sinuaju, and that friend. A series of unpleasant names flowed from the man's mouth. As time went by, Dako Hokja's expression became more and more distorted. Shit, it would be awkward if I tried to deal with it, but I can't back down like this. Dako Hokja was in a real dilemma. If it weren't for the reporters and people around him watching. But a hand of salvation was given to him by none other than the person who had caused the disaster. It's all a misunderstanding. You can examine the body here. 
This villain tried to attack me, so I defended myself. Can you take responsibility for that? Yes. Good. I'm someone who always thinks about all the possibilities so that innocent victims don't happen. Ahem. Professor Susahak, please go and confirm it. A woman standing among the group of professors hesitated before approaching the decapitated corpse. She closed her eyes for a moment as if she was looking into something, and then shouted so that everyone could hear. Aye it's true. This is a villain from the organization Eighth Layer Hell. People were shaken by her words. Such a name that belonged to a notorious crime syndicate was enough to make many people tremble. Because of their systematic structure and intelligence network, currently, the Hero Association had them labeled as Red Grade, which was a stage, before Black Grade. Ooh, as expected. Noah saved everyone again this time. Thank you very much, Noah. On the other hand, those around Noah looked at him with bright smiles. Camera shutters exploded from all directions. Then, standing in the middle of the crowd, the boy grabbed the decapitated head and shouted. Everyone, he's dead. You can all relax now. Wah! The grotesque sight made ordinary people frown while the trainees from the Pyongyang branch cheered enthusiastically. Such differences in temperature created a strange sight. They're not normal either. Thus, the atmosphere was finally settled after the Hero Association had officially dispatched investigators. Glaring at Noah who had taken his credit, Dako Hokja spoke. Even if this was for a greater good, you should be held accountable, as you had caused such a commotion. Me? Why? I caught a villain. Don't ask. Damn, it's impossible to talk to a child like you who can't understand. I'm going to call your guardian right now. Hmm, all right. He didn't like the boy. How dare he question him when he was a junior who had just become a trainee hero. If the boy had reported it to him, wouldn't the credit belong to him? Insolent brat. And he had even made the extreme choice of murder. This case was clearly in violation of the oversuppression law and could be brought to court. I'd better take this opportunity to clean up his act. He thought as such as he held out his phone. Hello. Are you the guardian of the hero trainee Choi Noah? And a little later, putting down his phone, he looked at Noah with a bright smile. Ho ho, Mr. Noah. Why didn't you tell me earlier? How is Lady Fortune doing? If you need anything in the future, just tell me anytime. Thus, the appointment ceremony for the trainees, which was more flashy than any other in the past, came to an end. Chapter 54 I looked at my newly assigned accommodation. The space was about 66 square meters. From the entrance, a double-decker bed placed on each side of the wall, and four small desks placed side by side, could be seen. As could be guessed from the furniture, the institute's accommodation consisted of one room for four people. However, I was the only one in this room now. The director of the institute had provided me with such a treatment after his phone call with Choi Bok Hui. I couldn't believe the incident was resolved and I was also given this kind of service. Hee <laughs> hee, it was indeed good to be a noble. However, my noble life here was lacking a lot of interior quality in many ways. My life, which had become accustomed to all kinds of luxury items after having lived with Choi Bok Hui, could no longer tolerate these cheap furniture. I'll have to tidy up my room first. Twin fire eggs. Bulldoll, Alson. Eat. I fed them all the useless furniture in the room. Then, on top of the empty space, furniture I had brought from home were taken out and placed one by one. All of them were collections of furniture cherished by Choi Bok Hui, and were the works of artisans she had collected from all over the world. Well, it was a big house anyway, so she won't notice it for a while. The desolate accommodation was instantly transformed into an antique noble mansion after all of the furniture was placed. In addition, there was a large TV and game console on one wall, and the refrigerator was full of drinks and snacks. Good. Now it looked like a place where people would live. I guess it won't be a problem to spend a year in a place like this now. After finishing everything I had to do, I turned on my smartphone while burying myself in a soft sofa. Various community sites were heated due to today's event at the Hero Training Institute. Little hero Choi Noah saves the day again. Choi Noah caught a villain on his first day of being admitted to the Hero Training Institute. Information on the International Crime Syndicate, Eighth Layer Hell. Oversuppression Laws. Indiscriminate Murder. Is it okay to leave it like this? There were mainly positive opinions, but some civic groups and certain media outlets were fiercely criticizing my actions. But. Reputation has increased. Reputation has increased. Reputation has increased. In fact, for me, it didn't matter much what others say. Compared to the rising reputation, I could endure such ridiculous slander. In any case, using reporters was effective for my reputation. As I thought as such, the smartphone on my desk began to vibrate. The name Choi Bok Hui was displayed on the screen. Hmm. For some reason, I felt that she would annoyingly nag me, but I couldn't ignore it because I had some help today. When I reluctantly pressed the call button, a deep sigh was heard instead of a normal greeting. Hugh, I emphasized not to cause any trouble, but you caused such a serious accident as soon as you arrived. 
Choi Bokui's voice was weak and limp. Ha ha, it just happened like that. You, this is no laughing matter. None whatsoever. Why do you always cause trouble wherever you go? I can't just let the villain go when he's right in front of me. No, that's what I'm saying. Ha, huh. well, actually, I was a little worried about this. I had thought if I should kill him right there, or if I should wait and secretly kill him. However, after thinking about it, I wondered if there was a need to be as self-conscious as before now that I already had a hero license. And Choi Bakui was behind me, so who could touch me? Reflect on yourself if you don't know. I don't know how many times I've said this. I'd rather have you bother my familiars at home. Choi Bokui's sermon began. I put it on speaker and turned on my game console. Why aren't you talking? Are you listening? I'm reflecting on myself. Perhaps because it was that time of the month, but there was quite a lot of nagging today. Thanks to that, I was able to fully enjoy the games I had put off. Anyway, it was a relief that I was able to resolve this, but be careful from now on. Can't you please live a normal life like other children? I'll try. Who, I'm going to die at this rate. And I have one more thing to tell you. You should keep this in mind. Choi Bokui's tone abruptly sank and became serious. The nuance was definitely different from usual. Feeling something amiss, I put down my game console and asked. What is it? Anyhow, you'd better take care of yourself for a while. What do you mean? I don't know what's going on, but, when I checked your fortune, I found that there was someone after you. I don't think you'll have a problem, but I have a bad feeling this time. If nothing else, her witch ability was as real as it gets. The prophecies she had made so far had a high hit rate, so in this regard I couldn't easily ignore her words. I understand. Hugh, okay. Eat well and go to bed early since it's late. I'm hanging up now. Yes. Hanging up. Choi Bakui hung up right after. Then, I thought about what she had said for a while. Who in the world was after me? The first that came to mind was the perverted devil who had kidnapped me. But I didn't think he would be able to move right now since he had been seriously injured. Or now that I was a hero, were the villains after me? I haven't done anything to create grudges in the second round, so it was hard to guess. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. Soon, I heard a sudden knock on the door. Knock, knock. Hmm? Before I knew it, looking at the clock, it was approaching midnight. Who could it be at this late hour? I got up from the sofa and opened the door. Then, standing there was an unexpected figure. Nice to meet, you. Choi Noah. Pale skin like a corpse. I didn't know why, but the gloomy mood gave me a bad feeling. Examinee number 00187, which had been looking at me ever since the Pyongyang branch. It was this very same guy. In his hand was a box of packed chicken from the institute. His name, was it Fernando? He looked at the view of my room and stood for a moment in astonishment before speaking unintelligibly. Can, we go inside and talk, a moment? There was plenty of time to talk during the day. Why would he come to me at this hour? It could only be interpreted as an act of avoiding the eyes of others. The warning that Choi Bakui had given me suddenly came to mind. Don't tell me, was he a villain? I immediately took out Red Velvet Curse from my inventory and asked. What are you up to? I just want to be friends. There's no need, wary. Why? Just, I just want to get to know you. You, want to get closer. There was no response from evil instant death. Did he really come with pure goodwill as he said? No, it couldn't be. I see, now I know what you're up to. I finally understood the whole situation. The reason why he was so attentive to me all this time. He was a pervert. And I don't make friends with such people. You thought I didn't know what you were up to? Th that's, what? I just wanted to be friends. This despicable guy pretended to be perplexed. My annoyance soared when I realized this disgusting side of him. I've already figured out what you're doing, so don't ever try to fool me again. Uh, uh. He stood clumsily in front of the door, even though he had already been discovered. Why was he so persistent? Unfortunately, he wasn't even a villain, and I thought it would be somewhat of a headache if I killed him. I glared at him with all my might. I could see his arms and legs shaking. Tisk, get lost. I clicked my tongue and closed the door. Thud. I was sure he understood what I had meant with this. Soon, the movements outside the door disappeared. That was very annoying. He reminded me of a bad memory I had long forgotten. I shook my head and hurried away the thoughts in my head. I had never been to school, so I was looking forward to it. But as expected, it didn't seem to fit me very well. I couldn't believe I had to live in the same place as him for a year. Thinking as such. Ding. Challenge. Happy school life. Condition. Finish Hero Training Institute in top 10% of grades or better. Time. One year. Reward, varies depending on graduation result. Challenge, heartthrob king. Condition, receive favorability from the opposite gender. Time, one year. Reward, varies depending on favorability. Challenge, model student, repeatable. Condition, receive top score in three evaluations, 0 slash 3. 
Time, 1 year. Reward, 1x random box, low. Suddenly, countless challenges came to mind. The rewards and conditions were different, but one thing in common was that they were all time-limited challenges that could only be done at the institute. As expected, school is a very good place. I was starting to look forward to my life at the institute. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Fernando stood for a while staring at the closed door. I, did I make a mistake? His mind was foggy as usual and his thinking was slow, but even considering what was left of his common sense, Noah's reaction was unusual. Just in case, he had even asked Azazel for advice beforehand. He had thought this was a good enough strategy to build a friendship. No way, did he notice? That was the only reason he could think of. Otherwise, such a reaction didn't make sense. He recalled what Noah had said earlier. You thought I didn't know what you were up to. I've already figured out what you're doing, so don't ever try to fool me again. How on earth did he figure it out? It should have been completely hidden. In fact, didn't the physical tests during the hero exam show that his physical condition was generally the same as that of living people? So, how? On top of that, Noah didn't take any action for some reason even though his identity was discovered. Given that he had viciously slashed a villain in the morning, it wouldn't have been strange if he had immediately swung his sword now. Something. Does he have an ulterior motive? He tried to think, but no answer came to his murky head. However, he was certain of one thing. At this rate, he knew that he would fail this task. Soon, the only memories that remained in his head came to mind. The face of his younger sister smiling brightly and his family who were brutally murdered. Here, can't stop. Azazel had promised him. He would be able to have his revenge one day if he did what he was told. But now he was stuck. I need to contact Azazel. With creaking steps, Fernando walked back to his accommodation. Asterisk 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 asterisk. The trainee's first morning at the institute. Many were already seen gathered at the training ground early in the morning following the broadcast. Even though many of them couldn't sleep last night because they were either tense or excited, their expressions were still full of vitality. And among the trainees, Shirawi stood awkwardly with her forehead creased. The humiliation. She recalled yesterday's appointment ceremony. As the only child of an S-rank hero, she had been doing her best to avoid tarnishing her father's reputation. However, yesterday's appearance was very pathetic even for someone like her. She felt as if everyone around her was looking at her and whispering. I can't believe I fainted. She was simply scared and that had caused her to hyperventilate and faint. And because it was already evening when she had opened her eyes in the infirmary, when she had visited her accommodation late, roommates who had already gotten to know each other were looking at her with awkward eyes. It's beneath you, Shirawi, so why? What had made her even more frustrated was that her roommates were talking about Noah. Because of the event yesterday, Noah had once again caught the public eye for himself. Number one in real-time search. There were articles from various community sites and even fan clubs. As a commercial model, it should have been her in Noah's position. However, there was only one article on her. And even such an article didn't contain any substance. It was a gossip article written by a paparazzi media company just for the sake of getting clicks. Shirawi, daughter of Lightning Sword, fainted from fear of seeing a villain? When she clicked on the article, a zoomed-in picture of her mouth covered in vomit was posted. She had managed to control her boiling heart, but in the end she couldn't sleep at all last night. It's all because of Choi Noah, a child who had appeared out of the blue and had taken all the attention she deserved. She resented the boy. Soon, Noah walked out with a half-asleep face. Dozens of people gathered around the yawning boy and formed a line. Noah, do you want me to massage your scalp? I'm really good at it, hee <laughs> hee. The hospitality was as cordial as a high VIP. It resembled the eyes of the followers who usually looked at her father. The group had already earned the nickname Choi Noah Army at the Institute. I, I can't believe I lost to such a child. She glared at Noah and gnashed her teeth. With such a narrow time left before the start of the assembly, everyone had finally arrived at the training ground. However, there was no sign of the person who should have been here. The person who had gathered them here, the homeroom professor, had yet to appear. As time went by in the moment the trainees were confused. Suddenly, a message arrived on the smartwatch everyone was wearing. Gather to the top of Wang Neong Mountain. First come first serve basis and preferential treatment for breakfast. First to arrive will receive the top score. What the hell is going on here? Well, isn't Wang Neong Mountain the mountain behind the institute? When everyone was just looking at each other and trying to grasp the situation, there was one person who had kicked off and ran faster than anyone else. Good, I'm definitely going to make my mark here. Shirawi burst out mana she had been preparing in advance and shot forward. In fact, she had already known about this new curriculum ahead of time. It was thanks to a close aide next to her father who had secretly informed her. And unlike her upright father, she didn't think such behavior was wrong. 
to save citizens by all means necessary. That was her justice. Information warfare is also a hero's skill. She silently smiled and looked back. Others were still staring blankly in place, not thinking of moving. It seemed they were slow to grasp the situation. On top of that, Noah was yawning with a tired expression and there was no hint of him moving. Great. If it was speed, then it was the area she was most confident in. Her hero rank had already been decided anyway, so she could only win the top grade at the institute. She increased her speed by simultaneously using her ability and mana. Lightning. Electricity surrounded her body as she dashed across the ground like lightning. Good. Let's get first place and make everyone forget what happened yesterday. She was certain she would be able to beat everyone and take care of first place. At that moment. Boom. Suddenly a roar broke out from behind her back. Quickly looking back, she saw debris soaring high as if a cannonball had exploded near the training ground. H huh? And soon she saw a bright red trajectory climbing the mountain path. At the center of it was Noah. Boom. Bang. Explosive energy poured out and dust scattered in all directions each time he kicked off the ground. It was violent and didn't seem like any technique was being used at all. However, Noah was quickly closing the distance. And no. I can't lose. She ran with clenched teeth. But the sound from behind was getting louder and louder. At last, Noah was running alongside her. Their eyes met, and at that moment. Suddenly her stomach began to feel nauseous. Just like how she had felt at the appointment ceremony yesterday. Contrary to her will, her body was feeling worse each second. And no. Such a problem shouldn't be happening now. She tried to control her throbbing stomach. However, not only her inner self, but also her ability began to disrupt. P please hold on. She prayed earnestly. Fortunately, her body started feeling somewhat relieved. First place is mine if I can hold on like this. As she thought as such, Noah spoke with a kind smile. Nina, are you okay? You don't look very well. When she saw his smile, the scenes from yesterday replayed in her mind. The section of a cut neck, and the figure of a boy approaching with a bloody sword. Oof. The nausea that she had been holding came up at once. She quickly covered her mouth, but her legs got caught. And then? Boom. She eventually fell to the ground at a running speed. The tangled mana ran wild in her body, and the electricity surrounding her body gradually dissipated. And in her eyes, she could see Noah stopping and looking down at her. Th this can't be, I if I faint here again. But her consciousness was gradually fading. And in the end, she couldn't continue her thoughts and fainted again. Asterisk 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 asterisk. What was wrong with her? I thought she was running pretty well at the C-rank standard, but she suddenly fell on the ground. It was the same at the appointment ceremony. She seemed to be someone who faint often. Did she have an illness? In addition, even though I had shown as much kindness as I could, no message of my favorability increasing came to mind. What should I do? I looked down at her for a moment. I didn't think she would wake up anytime soon. Hmm, if I leave her here, it could be dangerous when others are running. I picked her up and hung her on a tree that could clearly be seen. Good. That should be a good way for others to see and help. I had invested my precious time out of kindness, so I was sure my favorability will increase when she wakes up. After finishing up, I ran along the mountain path with a little more speed. The long winding scenery passed me by at a brisk pace. Originally I was just going to kill time here, but, as long as practically any action was rewarded, I didn't intend to let anyone score higher than me. I speed up a little more by using inner heart. After running for a long time, I was finally able to reach the top of the mountain. Then, I heard a notification from my smartwatch. Beep. Ranking, 1 slash 398. First place as I had expected. I still couldn't see the presence of others. Currently, the gap between me and other trainees was at a level where even the word competition was a joke, so it was a natural result that I had gotten first place. Completing challenges in this environment will simply be like shooting a fish in a barrel. Ding. Challenge, model student, repeatable, updated. Receive top score in three evaluations, one third. Yes. Where else could I find such a good farming spot? I felt like I was in a bonus stage. Hee <laughs> hee, looks like I'll be able to synergize my skill set and items after a year. As I thought as such, a clear voice came from behind me. As expected, I knew Mr. Noah would come in first. It was a familiar voice. I turned my head in the direction of the sound. And when I saw the culprit, I had no choice but to frown. My name is Samaria, your homeroom professor who will be in charge of the batch of trainees this time. I look forward to your kind cooperation. A clergy uniform with close-fitting thighs. Eyes bent like a half-moon and an eye-catching smile. Samaria, who I had met at the Pyongyang branch, looked at me with a strange smile. No, why was she here? A crazy woman had broken into my beautiful bonus stage. Shall we have a little chat? Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. I had a hunch life won't be easy here.
Chapter 55 Villain Syndicate, Eighth Layer Hell The group, which had received the Red Wanted Order worldwide, had one characteristic that set them apart from other villains. That was, their main form of communication was over the internet. It was a peculiar way through the use of a message application. Hell is everywhere and nowhere. Like the eerie phrase written on a red background, their existence was completely veiled. Even among those in the group, it wasn't uncommon for them not to know one another. A coworker who laughs and chat with you every day could very well be a villain belonging to Eighth Layer Hell. Because of this, the Hero Association was still unable to grasp the purpose of Eighth Layer Hell, let alone their size. And behind the construction of such a massive syndicate, there was only one rule. Carry out orders to raise your rank, and raise your rank to issue orders. This simple rule had created a thorough pyramid structure. As a result, the members scattered around the world had no information on each other or loyalty to the group. They would willingly perform orders all for the sake of raising their ranks and earning the right to issue orders. And, among them, there was a man who was still trying to get to the top of such a pyramid. Kim Gyuwon was looking at the list of orders he could perform through the special application used by the members of the group. Fuck, there's nothing worth it. His screen showed the possible orders he could do based on his rank, but there were only tasks that didn't suit him or ones that seemed too dangerous. He saw an order regarding a member who had infiltrated the Hero Training Institute and was decapitated, but no matter how high the points he could earn was, he didn't feel like applying for such a dangerous job right now. Also, it was extremely rare for members of 8th Layer Hell to appear directly in the media, so this event had shocked most of the members, including him. Even worse, it would become harder and harder to hide their identities if the Hero Association decides to take out a knife toward the group due to this event. Ha, huh, I should bide my time and wait for an opportunity. As he thought as such, a red notification window appeared on his screen. And at the top of it was the word express. WH what's this? This was the first express order he had received since entering 8th layer hell. Such a special order was something that only 8 absolute people called the 8 evils could send. Originally, it was a message that wouldn't come to someone like him, but this time it seemed to be an exception. Kim Gyuwon swallowed his saliva and confirmed the order. Special order. Content. Kidnap or removal. Subject. Choi Noah. Details are attached below. Rewards. 1. Kidnap. 5 million points. 2. Removal. 500,000 points. F5 million points? He gazed at the rewards with his mouth open. Among the orders he could receive now, the highest reward was only 100 points, and it was a matter of life and death just to succeed. So, compared to the 5 million points, it was a figure that could only be obtained by risking his life 50,000 times. Th this many points. It was the equivalent of 500 billion won if he didn't use it to raise his rank and instead exchange it for money. The amount was enough for anyone to live comfortably for the rest of their lives without having to worry about anything ever again. He stared blankly at his smartphone for a while before hurriedly turning on his computer to collect information on Noah. The points, I must get it no matter what. He looked at the computer monitor with greed in his eyes. And, at the same time, those around the world who were thinking the same thing also began to frantically collect information on Noah. Asterisk 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 asterisk. In a roundabout way, the hero industry was based on a merit system. So rather than a person's background, it could be said that their accomplishments after becoming a hero were more important. After all, as a profession where they fight and run into villains every day, there was the very real possibility of increasing the scale of damage and creating more problems if they weren't careful. Therefore, the Hero Training Institute's policy had also adopted a competency-oriented curriculum in compliance to the industry's standards. Everything was on the basis of merit. And the trainees who had just entered such a place were deeply starting to understand that fact. That looks delicious. Hee <laughs> hee, I won't give it to you. I'm hungry too, so I'll eat alone. Wh when did I ask for it? I'm just saying. That's all. The trainees, who had taken part in the welcoming ceremony early in the morning, were now eating together with their close friends. An everyday scenery that could be seen anywhere. However, contrary to a normal canteen, the food in front of them varied greatly. On one person's tray was plenty of appetizing meat dishes, while on another's was only seaweed and kimchi in a thin plastic bag. This was the preferential treatment from the morning's results. And among those who were eating, there was definitely someone who stood out. Wow. This is good. The boy who had come in first with an overwhelming gap. In front of Noah, not only were there main dishes, but there were more than 20 side dishes. Cooked vegetables, shredded vegetables, grilled, stewed, salted. The luxurious table could be said to be fit for a king from the Joseon dynasty. Noah busily moved his chopsticks as he ate the dozens of dishes. Noah, is it delicious? Saki, who came right next to Noah, asked while licking her chopsticks. The meat piled up on her tray had long disappeared into her stomach. Yes. It's delicious. 
Then, the short rib patties there, can I try? Saki stared earnestly at Noah. Mousen, who was next to her, shouted. Hey, Noah's growing, so don't think about stealing his food. But I'm still hungry. I had to eat kimchi and rice, while you ate all the meat by yourself and you're still hungry. Stop talking nonsense and go put away your tray. Hyuk, I'm supposed to eat a lot. Or else I can't use my ability. The moment they were quarreling, Noah, who was watching the scene, spoke. I won't be able to finish all of this by myself anyway, so you can have what's left. Wow. Really? Noah is the best. Hee <laughs> hee. Instead, I'm bored of eating, so go over there and do something interesting. All right. Wait a minute. She soon picked up her spoon, grabbed it like a microphone, and began singing merrily. Oh. Saki is pretty good, isn't she? Hey. It's my turn next. I'm going to sing and get some side dishes. Dozens of people, called the Choi Noah's army, stood up and cheered. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. In an instant, the canteen had become noisy. Anne. Shirawi was watching such a sight from a distance. The Choi Noah's army seemed to have forgotten they were trainees. Their behavior was as free as if they owned the place. In the noisy landscape, she could see Noah smiling and giggling. Really, there's nothing to like about him. She wrinkled her fine brows. Then, suddenly, the tray in front of her caught her eyes. There was a murky porridge, as if it had been washed out from a rag. It looked as if it was made to kill a person's taste buds out of spite. Naturally, it should be rich in nutrients since it was food made to be eaten by the trainees, but she couldn't do it. No, let's think of it as survival training. She scooped up some of the porridge with her spoon and put it in her mouth. Her eyes widened and she covered her mouth with her hand. What on earth did they put into the porridge? It was the most horrible taste she had ever experienced in her life. It was no different than a punishment game. This was simply not edible human food. However, she was unconscious all day yesterday, so she hadn't eaten a single meal and felt that she wouldn't be able to hold on if she starved herself this morning. She closed her eyes and pushed the nasty porridge back into her mouth. Hyuk. The terrible taste spread through her mouth. At the same time, tears almost welled up at the realization of her pathetic situation. As the daughter of an S-rank hero, she had lived in the spotlight all her life. On top of that, thanks to her beautiful appearance and outstanding talent, she had always walked an easy path. Why should I suffer? Compared to the luxurious dining table in front of Noah, she felt truly insignificant eating such garbage. Her pride no longer allowed her to eat it. Clank! She put down her spoon and glared at Noah fiercely. What the hell does he have against me? Let's say fainting was my mistake, but why did he have to leave me hanging from a tree? As a result, every trainee found she had fainted as they climbed the mountain path. Far from recovering from yesterday's image, an even more disgraceful image was imprinted in everyone's mind. Someday, I'll get my payback. She gritted her teeth, looking at Noah who was laughing and chatting happily. Soon, she heard a loud voice of a man beside her. Ha ha ha. Rawi, don't leave any leftovers. Hurry up and eat. It's all made from the precious taxes of the citizens. Yom Gang Jun was enthusiastically eating his nasty porridge. As expected, he had fallen behind because he was aiding her. Shirawi gave a small sigh and spoke. Help yourself, Oroboni. Really? Then, I'll enjoy this delicious meal. He took her tray and began to enthusiastically devour the porridge. And after having emptied all the porridge in such a short time, he spoke in a friendly tone. Don't hate him too much. W-H what? Mr. Noah. She looked at him with a startled look. Usually, he acted foolish, but sometimes he would speak to her like this. I never did. Why do you think I hate him? Well, that's a good thing. I also misunderstood him yesterday, but it turns out he was a righteous person who hated villains more than anyone else. That's. So you hurry up and relax too. Jealousy and hatred are like poison that eats away at a person. Yom Gang Jun said with his usual passionate eyes. She knew well that what he had said made sense. But. I still don't like him. Her heart regained its clarity and she glared at Noah again. Asterisk 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 asterisk. I had felt this when I had to prepare for the hero exam, but people had to study so many subjects just to become a hero. From basic legal knowledge, to emergency first aid, to even information on villains currently wreaking havoc around the world. Of course, in my case, I was able to easily pass the exam thanks to Elizabeth, but it seemed the others here had invested a considerable amount of time trying to learn such useless knowledge. Not only that, after reading the curriculum, I had realized that there were an incomparable amount of subjects the trainees had to learn. Subjects such as the rule of conduct on the field, and how to deal with each kind of villain. And, trainees will learn these trivial rules by doing direct simulation training. When I pulled the necessary textbooks for the year, it was taller than even me, so there was certainly a lot to learn even on a second glance. I didn't know why anyone needed to know these things just to catch villains. 
Suddenly, I recalled what Samaria had said to me after I had finished the run challenge a while ago. I don't think there's anything worth learning here for Mr. Noah. So if you want, I can solve that problem. I didn't hear how she would solve it, but honestly, what she had said was correct. What the hell could I learn here? My skills were now better than most professors here. So I was a little moved by her words. Had it not been for last night's challenge updates, I might have taken her offer. But, there were still rewards to be gained living at this institute, and accepting her offer now would be like ignoring the current quests and moving to the next map. I won't miss out on a reward no matter how small it was. It was nothing short of shameful for a gamer to leave a reward that could be gained. As I was organizing my thoughts, I heard a loud voice of a man. Repeat after me. Muscles are great. And muscles are great. On a platform stood a tan professor with his shirt off. The man's muscles wriggled like they were going to burst. Hey, I didn't hear you. Muscles are great. He was the professor of basic physical fitness, the one who had introduced himself as Madonguk a while ago. It had been an hour since the lesson started and he had been proudly talking about himself and nothing but muscles. You know, these days. It's just magic and ability, but nobody understands what's really important. In the end, it's these muscles that protect you at the last minute. Look at me. I wasn't born with any ability, but I became a B-rank hero with just muscle training. The only thing that matters is grit. Sweat dripped down his body. His copper skin shone and his chest muscles wriggled. Even though I was sitting in the back row, I felt like I could smell his sweat all the way from here. Seeing that, I once again became skeptical about what I could learn here. I should have just accepted Samaria's offer. Now it seems I'll have to take this useless lecture for the next year. I took out my game console and turned it on. Then, suddenly, I heard a loud shout. You there. In the last row. What are you doing? I looked up and saw Ma Dongguk pointing at me. Then, he walked up to me with a flushed face. Oh ho, you have a lot of nerve, don't you? How dare you take out a game console in my class? Is my class not worth taking? To be honest? No. W-H what? It looks like you need a proper attitude adjustment. Confidence just because you're the top student. I'll make sure you realize how little power you have. Stand up. I stood up as he told me to. Attention was drawn from the surrounding area. Then, Madonguk put his hands behind his head and strained his stomach. His abs became divided like a washboard and it wriggled in a ferocious manner. Now, hit me in my six-pack. With that cotton fist of yours. Can I really hit you? Yes. Go ahead and hit me. I won't feel a thing. Then you'll realize the greatness of muscles. He grinned, revealing his white teeth. I looked at him for a moment and sighed softly. Let's say I hit professor, what if you die or get hurt? What? Ha ha ha. I don't think that'll happen, but if it does, I'll give you a full score. Promise? Well, a full score was a good deal for me. I had to carry out my challenges, so this worked out well. But I didn't need him to die, so I better control my strength. Hurry up. Don't waste time. Cook. I struck him directly in the abdomen that was grossly sticking out. Boom. Ma Dongguk flew like a cannonball across the wooden platform and crashed. Boom. Crack. The platform collapsed once the supports fell. Debris fell over him and dust rose up. And, his figure which could be seen beyond it was no longer moving. Ah. Uh, I had failed to control my strength. However, he had also confidently told me to just hit him. No way, my hero license won't be revoked just because of this, right? There was a breathtaking silence. The trainees looked at me in unison. Looking back at them, I shouted out. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. You all heard it, right? The professor had told me to hit him. So, this, it was self-defense. Chapter 56. You, hitting a professor at the institute? Have you lost your mind? In a neatly decorated room, Dako Hakju shouted with a flushed face. And in front of him sat Noah, the culprit of the incident. He had rushed to the scene as soon as he had heard the news, and in order to keep the disaster from leaking out, he had hurriedly snatched Noah away. However, despite his considerate action, on the contrary, Noah spoke as if he was full of displeasure. I only did it because the professor told me to hit him. W-H what? Why you, really? Dako Hakja sat down, grabbing the back of his head. He felt as if his high blood pressure, which had improved with a vegetarian diet, was about to relapse. Shit. Why does this keep happening? His plan was to stay quiet and wait for the moment to return to the Hero Association, so how come there had been one incident after another just as the semester began? Before he could even finish writing up the report on yesterday's murder of a villain, another accident had happened today. At this rate, the accident-free date that he had struggled to build could be broken because of the boy. It had been ten years since he took office. He had worked long hours as the mountains and rivers changed, met children of famous families, and taught heroes who became corrupted and had turned into villains. However, he had never met someone as recklessly as Noah Wright from the start. Where the hell did he come from? 
he looked at the culprit sitting in front of him, a slim boy with a big smile on his face. The more he looked at Noah, the more he saw the splitting image of his grandson. This kid knocked out Professor Ma Dongguk with one punch? On second thought, he couldn't believe it. A robust body stronger than steel, and even the burning vigor that never gets tired. Ma Dongguk, who had achieved B-rank status simply through physical training, could be said to be a rather famous figure in the industry. When he was informed that he had collapsed, his initial thought was that another villain had appeared. Even now, he could feel his heart skip a beat when he recalled the feeling a moment ago. For him to cause another accident like this as if yesterday's trouble wasn't enough. He could only assume that Noah really didn't respect his authority. Did he think the institute was an amusement park where he could cause one nonsense after another? Anger soared from the bottom of his heart. Even if I don't disclose this to the public, I can't just let it go like this. If there was something he disliked more than anything else, it would be disregarding his authority. So with a grimace, he spoke. You rascal. There's a limit to everything. You've already made too big of a mistake this time for me to let it go. What, I honestly didn't know he was so weak. Hugh, tell that to the committee at the disciplinary hearing. You'll be held accountable for this. Dako Hokju, who was certain Noah had never faced repercussions for his actions because of his superior talent, intended to take this opportunity to fix his habit firmly. This was by no means the venting of a narrow-minded old man. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. As a senior hero who had come before him, he just wanted to correct his wrong values. He nodded to himself. Then, Noah spoke. But do we have to do that? I don't think that's a very good idea. W.H. what? Why you still haven't come to your senses? This isn't a problem that you can avoid just because you don't like it. If you're a hero, you should take responsibility for what you've done. Don't think I'll let it slide just because you're young. No, I mean my mother will come here if we do that. Professor, is that okay? That's too bad. I was going to talk about professor to my mother when I got home after the semester. Well, let's do it your way. Uh, uh, come to think of it, he had been oblivious for a while, but who was behind the little fellow? Although the Hero Association was an independent organization, he was well aware of the connections the nobles held behind the scene. What if he goes home and makes up stories about me out of spite? As he was also an A-rank hero, it would be difficult to penalize him unless he makes a big mistake, but one thing was certain his dream of being chief of the Hero Association would never be realized. His expression stiffened. Seeing that, Noah smirked. Professor, I have to go to my next class. So can I go now? Yes. Oh, I'll also take it as there's no disciplinary hearing. Then, have a nice day. With those parting words, Noah left the office. Dako Hokjut stared blankly at the closed door for a while. It's not easy to live. A heavy sigh resonated through the room. And a moment later, in order to cover up the incident this time quietly, he started typing on his keyboard again. Asterisk 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 asterisk. A hero's job wasn't over just because the villain was caught. In order to completely close a case and convict someone, there was a routine procedure that had to be followed before they could be sentenced. If there was insufficient evidence, or if there was some ambiguity in the case, the villain who had been arrested would be released for lack of evidence. Thus, collecting various evidence necessary for the trial was also just as important of a procedure as arresting them. Ma Juhi, an active B-rank hero and the professor of criminal psychology and interrogation techniques, was a veteran who boasted excellent skills in collecting such evidence. In regard to interrogating criminals to get a confession, she had a special ability in the charm sequence that allowed her to create a gap in the mind of others and have them talk against their will. As I have explained so far, our job as heroes isn't to only arrest villains. The process of obtaining a confession is also important. After the morning commotion, the afternoon lesson had begun. Ma Juhi, who had climbed onto the podium, was explaining the syllabus to the trainees. Her voice had the power to draw people's attention, and as such, the trainees couldn't help but attentively listen. Professor. Then, we have to protect the arrested criminals when interrogating them. Professor. If a villain has an ability in the mind sequence. Hands rose here and there as the trainees actively participated in the lecture. The classroom was filled with the fervor of learning. Ma Juhi looked at the trainees with satisfaction. As expected, my class is perfect. She had ranked first in the lecture evaluation for the fifth consecutive year. And as a result, even though she was a young professor, she was quickly solidifying her position. If this continues, she may be able to aim for the position of director at this institute someday. This level of participation is good, shall I move on to the next step? A person's first impression accounted for a large part of the relationship. Knowing this better than anyone else, she had held a small demonstration to directly showcase her skills in the first class of every semester. Feeling that the atmosphere was ripe, she looked at the trainees and spoke. Well, since it's our first lesson today, I'd like to play a small game with you. Oh, of course it's not just any game for fun, right? 
The game we're going to play now is a kind of training to develop your interrogation techniques that I've mentioned today. The rules of the game were simple. It was a game in which two people took turns asking questions until either person matched the color of what the other person had put down. It could be thought of like the game children would play often when they were young, but one difference was that they didn't have to answer the questions honestly. Rather, it was a task that took a lot of concentration to sort out truths and lies, just like when interrogating a villain. Feel free to use your ability as much as you want. Abilities like mind reading and telepathy are also fine. However, direct attacks that cause harm to the body are prohibited. If you actually do such a thing in the future, you'll be punished according to the relevant laws. Well, then, I'll now take volunteers. By the way, the winner will receive the top score. As soon as Majuhi finished speaking, many trainees raised their hands to volunteer. Ho ho, it's so nice to see everyone participating so enthusiastically. Let's see, shall the person in the front row come up? In response to her call, a trainee confidently walked up. I've already explained the rules, so I don't have to remind you, right? Yes. Ho ho. I'm glad you're so brave. Looking at your confident expression, perhaps, do you have an ability in the mind sequence? Yes. My ability is mind reading. I see. Well, that's perfect. You will be a good example for other trainees. Let's get started. After writing the colors they had in mind on a pre-prepared piece of paper, they faced each other. I'll give you the chance to ask a question first. At her words, the man closed his eyes. Then, using his ability to look into her mind, he asked. What color are you thinking of? His ability was mind reading. It was a common ability in the mind sequence. Majuhi thoughts began to flow into his head. At this rate, it would be easy to figure out the color she had written down. Everybody thought so. But, huh? The man looked at her with a puzzled look. In her mind, there were dozens of colors passing by at the same time. Looking at the man, Ma Juhi spoke. Huhu, mind reading isn't foolproof. If a villain knew how to defend it like now, you would be helpless, right? So rather than relying too much on your ability, it's important to learn proper interrogation techniques and use them together. Oh, I see. Thank you very much for your guidance. Well, now it's my turn to ask you a question. By the way, isn't the heat a little strong today? Ma Juhi took off her jacket and hung it on the desk. On top of the slightly sweaty shirt, the curves of the body were subtly revealed. As soon as everyone was focused on her actions, she gazed into the man's eyes and spoke in a seductive voice. Tell me your color. Ma Juhi's charm was amplified by her ability. The man's eyes glistened with a pink color and soon began to waver. Saliva dripped down from a corner of his mouth as his breathing became rough like an animal in heat. Ha, huh. Hyung, it's black. Okay, good job. The man had said the information she had wanted in a peculiar nasal voice. Everyone frowned at the scene that didn't look very good. A second later, Ma Juhi snapped her fingers and the man immediately regained his sobriety. I, I, just now. You did a good job. You can go down now. Ma Juhi said with a smile. The man went down the platform with a stunned look on his face. Applause from all sides were heard. It was like a scene from a movie. Enjoying the baptism of applause, she continued her lecture. Now, as you just saw, I was able to get a confession in just one question. The more advanced the interrogation technique, the less time it would take to get a confession. A rank heroes with legendary skills in this field don't even need to say a single word to make villains spit out information on their own. Naturally, it would be hard for you to get to that level, but if you take my class and train hard, you'll be able to learn the basics. Well, are there any other volunteers? She looked around and asked. However, unlike a while ago, there was no one who raised their hand. It was only natural after seeing how unsightly the man caught in her skill had looked. Hoo, I knew it would be like this. There had never been a trainee who dared to take up the challenge after she showed her skills each year. This kind of atmosphere was what she was aiming for. Everyone had been suppressed by her charisma. With a confident smile, she continued. If there are no more volunteers, I'll continue the lecture. At that moment. I'd like to give it a try. Hmm? The eyes in the classroom immediately turned to one place. The last row in a secluded spot. There was a young boy with his hand raised high. Ma Juhi was immediately able to identify the boy. Choi Noah. She had heard rumors about him. Not only on the internet, but also from the other professors who kept talking about him being first place in the nation. And, in the morning's lecture, he had left her half-brother Ma Dongguk in a terrible state. Although they weren't close as a family, she didn't feel very good when she saw him lying in the patient's ward. He's a trainee hero with no experience, how dare he act arrogant. She knew very well that he was stronger than her. But that conversation was only limited to combat power. No matter how excellent he was, without the proper experience, it was the same as giving a child a gun. And she was confident that such a little child would be defeated easily. It turned out well. She was going to take this opportunity to humiliate him thoroughly, establish her authority as a professor, and take revenge for Ma Dongguk. 
In this way, she concealed her innermost thoughts and summoned Noah to the podium. He stood before her with no tension, even though he had just seen what she was capable of. And for someone like her who was sensitive to reading the psychology of others, she felt that he was truly not nervous at the moment. She didn't like the way he looked at all. Arrogant brat. She was going to control her strength, but she thought it would be better to humiliate him more thoroughly. Do you understand the rules? Yes. Good. Then, you can begin the interrogation. Ah, but before I ask you a question, is there a time limit? Noah asked, as if he had suddenly remembered. Had he realized that once his turn was over that there would be no chance of winning? He seemed to want to figure out the answer without giving her a chance. It's useless even if he uses his brain, but the more he does, the more pathetic he'll look. She laughed inwardly and spoke. Of course. There's still plenty of time left for class, so you can spend as much time as you like. Really? I see. Then, I'll start. Noah immediately reached out his hand towards her. Hmm? What the hell is he trying to do? As she thought so, Ma Juhi realized that she couldn't move her body. H huh? What the hell was going on here? It felt as if invisible threads were controlling her body. Typically, it was one of the symptoms of being under a mind ability. How? She couldn't understand how a boy who only knew how to fight had broken through her mental barrier. While she was panicking, Noah approached her and spoke. I've seen it earlier, but as expected, it's better to use mental abilities when the person is careless. Then, he took out a suspicious-looking whip from somewhere. Seeing the whip, she urgently shouted. W wait. I clearly said no harm to the body. Don't worry. This won't harm the person. I it can't be. Let's stop this game, yup. She hurriedly tried to stop Noah, but before she knew it, even her lips' control was taken away. Soon, her hips stuck out against her will and she took a ridiculous posture. And no. The trainee simply watched without uttering a word. Her image of a charismatic professor she had protected for a long time was destroyed in an instant. He, how dare he, how dare he do this to me. She didn't know what kind of ability he had used, but once this was over, she planned to never leave him alone. Clack, clack, clack. An unidentified dial turning was heard. She glared at Noah with a ferocious look. He was manipulating something attached to the whip. Hmm, even so, you're a professor, so do your best, okay? At a first glance, the word Max was written on the dial attached to the whip. The moment she saw it, she was overcome by an unknown ominous feeling. And no way. And soon, her ominous feeling turned to reality. Let's get started. H.M. Hmm. Noah swung the whip in his hand mercilessly at her butt. Swike. Crack. H.M.M.M.M.M.P.H. She screamed silently. Stars sparkled in front of her eyes as her consciousness became blurred. What the hell kind of pain was this? She had never felt such pain even when she was kidnapped and tortured by villains in the past. Tears quickly streamed down. If Noah asks her now, from bank password to state secrets, she thought she would tell him everything. She gave Noah a pleading look as if to say she had lost and to release the bondage. Yup. H.M. Hmm. Sure enough, Professor's mental strength is amazing. You still haven't budged. But I haven't asked a question yet, so it's still my turn. Hmm. H.M. H.M. She shook her head desperately. Well, that's okay. There's still a lot of time left for class. Hmm, I'll ask you a question in about 30 minutes. H-M-M-M-M-M-M-P-H. Half an hour later. As if Noah had become an A-rank mentalist, he had gotten the confession he wanted without asking a single question. Chapter 57. Ding. Dong. Ding. A retro bell sounded, marking the end of the first day of the semester. However, I and other trainees had no choice but to remain in the classroom. This was because Ma Juhi, who was supposed to call the guide, had been sitting on the floor for a while now and saying nothing but nonsense. And no more lashes. P please forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Her condition didn't look very good. Swinging her arms in the air, she kept repeating the same words like a broken radio. Then, she began vomiting various misconducts even though nobody asked. Ache. Ack. Forgive me. Forgive me. I won't accept bribes again. I won't tamper with the grades. Even if the student. Hmm? I had just wanted to know the color, but even information I wasn't curious about was easily pouring out. This was the same symptom heroes who would come after me in the first round often showed. As expected, when you want information, a whip is better than a carrot. Love whip. Classification. Hobby item. Grade. D. Description. A luxury whip with heart decorations that was carefully crafted by a craftsman in a specific industry. Asterisk no injuries even if you're struck by this. Asterisk the pain level can be adjusted. In fact, I had thought it was trash, but it turned out to be a specialized item for interrogation. If she was interrogated the way I was used to, she would have died long before any confessions were made. But now, with this whip, I'll be able to collect information legally without causing any injury. This will come in handy in the future. 
After observing her for a while, I spoke to Mousen who was staring blankly in the vicinity. Ajisi, please take the professor to the medical center. Oh, oh, yes, got it. Ah, while you're at it, let them know our class is over. Yom Gang Jun, who was next to him, also helped carry Ma Juhi as they headed to the medical center. Then, the trainees looked at each other and began to murmur about what they had just heard. Did you hear that? How can a professor at the institute do such a thing? I thought Noah had gone crazy a moment ago, but did he know about this beforehand? Well, he's a very righteous person and had even dealt with a villain on the spot yesterday. They glanced at me and lowered their voices. Well, in fact, I didn't care if she was corrupt or not. More than that, there was something much more important to me now. Ding. Condition for the challenge, model student, repeatable, has been met. Achieved top score in three evaluations, three-thirds. Received 1x random box, low. Gained achievement title model student. Hee <laughs> hee. I smiled as I looked at the messages in front of me. Thanks to the top score I had gotten after interrogating Ma Juhi, I was finally able to earn a reward. It was a little trivial to be happy with a low-grade box at my level, but it was a different story when the challenge was a repeatable quest. Ding. Challenge updated. Achieved top score in three evaluations, 0 slash 3. The challenge was updated upon me receiving the reward. As such, low-grade boxes will roll into my hands if I just steadily stack top scores. Good, good. I turned on my smartwatch and checked the schedule. There were eight remaining courses I haven't received the top score yet. Considering that each professor can only give the top score once, it seemed I would be able to get two more rewards in the future. I couldn't believe it was so easy to get rewards. Maybe school life was perfect for me. Hadn't the status window also acknowledged that I was a model student? As I smiled proudly, someone shouted at me. Translator, Yasi. Proofreader, Karain. Choi Noah. How can you beat a professor so mercilessly in the middle of class? Hmm? When I looked back, I saw Shirawi standing up from her seat and pointing her finger at me. What the hell was she talking about? Did she doze off during class? It seemed she didn't know what interrogation meant. Or how gentlemanly I had interrogated this time. Majuhi's arms and legs were still attached, and she wasn't hurt at all. Weren't you watching? The professor wasn't hurt at all. Th that's, in any case. I don't know what tricks you're trying to pull, but you're done. However, despite my kind explanation, she was finding fault with me for no reason. Why was I at fault? I certainly just did my best within the rules. What do you mean? Humph. I've reported you directly to the school bulletin board earlier. I even filmed you assaulting a professor. So you better let go of any expectations that you'll be able to avoid disciplinary action. Shirawi glared at me with her arms folded. She was really ungrateful. Had she forgotten that I had saved her this morning? No matter how blind she was to my performance, I didn't expect her to be so unscrupulous as a hero trainee. Honestly, if it weren't for the challenges, she was someone who I wanted to take care of right now. Tisk. I briefly clicked my tongue and shook my head. At that moment. Boom. The classroom door abruptly opened and a man entered. Everyone's attention immediately turned toward the door. And there, Dako Hakju stood panting. Uh, uh, director? The trainee's eyes widened at his sudden appearance. Meanwhile, Dako Hakju shouted with a flushed face. Who the hell was it? Come out in front of me right now. He had a tablet in his hand and displayed on the screen was the homepage of the institute. Mana raged around him. The trainees turned their heads to avoid the fierce gaze of an A-rank hero. On the other hand, Shirawi approached Dako Hakju with a triumphant smile. She glanced at me as she rolled up one corner of her mouth. Director. It's that guy over there. Choi Noah assaulted Professor Majuhi. A triumphant look as if every problem had been solved. She seemed to think I would be disciplined as long as Dako Hakju had shown up. But. Shirawi. Did you post this on the school bulletin board? Dako Hakja said, glaring fiercely at Shirawi. Her expression faltered, perhaps because she had felt something amiss. P pardon? I posted it, but, is there a problem? You. I can't believe you posted such a thing on the website without the professor's permission. You're still a trainee, but you're already ignoring the reporting system? I I didn't mean. Gah. If your behavior undermines the perception of the institute, who the hell can trust heroes in the future? And you even posted a picture but did you get Professor Majuhi's consent? Th that's. Shirawi's eyes fluctuated wildly. Dako Hakju, who saw it, frowned and spoke. Because of your careless action, no, do you have any idea how difficult a situation you have put the heroes who have completed our training program in? B but it's not my fault. Oh ho. You still haven't repented for your mistake. Judging from the intensity of Dako Hakju's expression, it seemed unlikely that this problem would end easily. Well, she should have listened to the lesson carefully like I did. She had been causing trouble since the first day of school. When people say every school had a problem child, they were probably referring to someone like her. 
Hugh, even though you're the daughter of Lightning Sword, I can't turn a blind eye to this. Come with me right now. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. With the appearance as if she was being dragged to a slaughterhouse, she left the classroom together with Dako Hakju. While looking at her back, I shook my head. Asterisk 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 asterisk. The morning of the first Saturday after the start of the semester. Professors had gathered in a conference room to settle the week's work and discuss the contents for next week's lessons. Usually, the first meeting every year had a variety of issues on the agenda, but for some reason, there was only a heavy silence today. An oppressive and somber atmosphere. After some time, Dako Hakju, who sat at the head of a long table, spoke in a dry voice. Is everyone here? Yes. Dako Hakju looked at the vacant seats. Unlike the usual meetings, there were many absent professors. Perhaps because the professor of survival studies who was sitting near Dako Hakju was the closest, but he added an explanation. Professor Ma Dongguk has been transferred to a hospital, and Professor Ma Juhi is staying inside her home and refusing to teach. The professor of combat studies still hasn't regained consciousness, and the professor of medical studies. The names of those who weren't present came out of his mouth one after another. And each time that happened, the atmosphere inside the conference room became heavier and heavier. After the long report, the professor of survival studies handed the report to Dako Hakju. That's all. All the details are written here. And, I'm sorry to be giving it to you with one hand. He had a thick plaster cast on one of his arms. Dako Hakju read the contents with an expression as if he was confirming the list of casualties in a war. Soon, he looked up and examined the conference room again. Those who are sitting here now, no one was in good shape. Everyone had either a physical or mental ailment. What the hell is this? It had only been a week since the semester started, but it had become difficult for most of the professors to continue their classes. This could be said to be the worst crisis in the long history of the institute. In the past, even during the massive war against villains in Korea, the institute here had operated normally. Why the hell is this happening at a time when I'm here? Dako Hakja frowned. He looked at the report in his hand again. There was one name that appeared in each case. Choi Noah. His whole political career was on the verge of collapsing because of him. Not long ago, the daughter of Lightning Sword had posted something on the homepage so he had hurriedly deleted it. If the incident had gone public, there would have been an uncontrollable situation where even deleting the post wouldn't be enough. Damn it. With this number of reported cases, it would have been natural for Noah to be at fault. But strictly speaking, he had only participated in the classes diligently, and it was ambiguous because he didn't break any rules. There was even the background of a noble behind him, so there was the possibility of Dako Hakju facing a backlash, saying that he had taken unfair disciplinary action against him. Shit. The situation is twisted and his crisis didn't end here. Even if he could endure it for a year while concealing the cases as much as possible, his position inside the institute was starting to be in danger. Director, are you just going to continue to ignore this? That's right. I'm not going to teach any more classes if he comes in the future. Yes. Honestly, is there any subject that is worth learning for someone like Mr. Noah? Professors attending the meeting protested in groups. Even those who used to flatter Dako Hakju in order to make themselves look good were angrily screaming at him. It was nothing short of a dilemma. Dako Hakju wiped his forehead and cursed inside. Fucking hell. Why should I be involved in this? Noah was a massive disaster, as if he had been deliberately planted by someone to end his political career. How in the hell are you going to solve this problem? We have respected director's judgment so far, but we can't stand it any longer. More and more professors protested. The more they did so, the more his heart began to sink. Ah, my dream is over. His long-cherished ambition was flying farther and farther away. In a quiet nursing home, a shabby and lonely future unfolded in his head. Then, at that moment, a clear and soothing voice echoed through the conference room. Everyone. If so, may I say something? It was a voice that drew their attention for some reason. The professors who were protesting fiercely stopped. Clad in a clergy uniform was a beautiful woman. Sainta Samaria. Despite her status as an A-rank hero, she had applied to be here even though it had nothing to do with her chance at gaining a promotion. And in any case, even before Dako Hakja was born, she was already an A-rank hero. So although he held the status of director at the institute, he couldn't treat her lightly like the other professors. With a feeling of grasping at straws, Dako Hakja asked, By any chance, is there a way? Samaria gently smiled and replied, It's not such a big deal. I just wanted to tell you the best results come when it's done rationally. So, are you saying it's right to punish Mr. Noah? No. I think it's the opposite. In fact, all of these problems occurred because his skills exceeded those of the professors. Isn't it? Perhaps because her words were uncomfortable, but the professors in the conference room turned away and coughed. Samaria smiled at the sight. 
I don't mean the professors are lacking, it's just that the child is too excellent. You've never had an A-rank trainee hero before, have you? Th that's right. It was strange that there was such a talent here in the first place. All right, it's not that we're lacking. It's not our fault. The professors, who had been listening to Samaria quietly, began to agree with her one by one. In fact, from their point of view, their careers would be tarnished if this incident became known to the public. It could be said that it would be much more advantageous to pass the responsibility onto the Hero Association. Seeing the changing atmosphere, Dako Hokju looked earnestly at Samaria. Then, what should we do now? He's already enrolled here. I don't think the Hero Association will change the rules to solve this problem, is there any reasonable solution you can come up with? As I told you earlier, all problems can be solved very easily if they are resolved rationally. If his skills are better than those of the professors, wouldn't it be a problem that would be solved if a better professor teaches him? That's obvious, but, in order to teach him, we need at least a professor of A rank or higher. And to be honest, which A rank would want to come here? Also, if that happens, this will become known to the public. Hoo <laughs> no, you don't have to bring in a new professor from the outside. Don't you already have an A rank here? Wait, do you mean? The faculty, who belatedly understood the meaning, looked at Samaria with wide eyes. With a deep smile, Samaria spoke. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World. Sight only. Yes. Mr. Noah's classes will continue for the next year. But I'll take care of it myself. Between her beautifully curved smile, a gleam of madness shook.